and the pledge of a flag, and Peter, I would recognize you to uh, mention the police officers who were uh, thinking of in our prayers. Thank you, Chairman. As the um, as we go into our moment of silence, I please ask everyone to remember Orange County uh, raised um, Officer Brian Mulkeen, um, Margot Whitbury graduate who uh, died in the line of duty um, in the Bronx over the weekend. standing and I will recognize Rob Safsi to uh, introduce our singer this month. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen I'd like to invite up Betty Jo Merritt to sing our national anthem. <laughs> Betty Jo is a resident of Orange County as well as a veteran of the Army National Guard. Betty Jo. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the past. O'er the red boards we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there who oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land Thank you, Betty Jo, and thank you for your service to our great nation. Rob, you have the certificate from Mary uh, Betty Jo, before you leave, I do have a certificate. I do not have it here. It's up in the front. Peter, if you could grab that for me. <laughs> Betty Jo, on behalf of the Orange County Legislature, we'd like to present you with this certificate. Come on back up, yeah. By the entire legislature, Betty Jo, we'd like to present you with a certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for your service to our time. Thank you, Betty Jo. That was fantastic. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Here. The Duke? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Pulisic? Here. Luhan? Present. Minuta? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Ruskevich? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Staganga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Tortell? Here. Tui? Here. Bureau? Here. Brescia? 21 present. Okay, we have one proclamation. I'd like to invite up Kellyanne Costello Larrier, Executive Director of Safe Homes, on behalf of recognizing the Domestic Violence Awareness Month proclamation. 
Please meet me up in the front. Kellyanne, on behalf of the legislature, I'd like to thank you for all you do and your volunteers on behalf of domestic violence awareness in the county. Uh, you had the closed line ceremony the other day, and I believe Legislator Bureau and Majority Leader Benelli and the county exec were there. And I don't know if anybody, and Legislator Sassy was there as well. And uh, we really appreciate everything you do. And I have this proclamation. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, we definitely support your endeavors. Um, I guess Legislator O'Donnell served on your your board for a number of years. And we appreciate that as well. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating October 2019 as Domestic um, Violence Awareness Month. Whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects victims of all races, religions, ages, education, and income and levels. And whereas the crime of domestic violence destroys an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity due to the system systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control or abuse. Whereas Safe Homes of Orange County and their Family Justice Center provide one-stop, co-located wraparound services for victims of violence and their children, offer hope and assistance for all members of families torn by domestic violence, as well as pre prevention and education activities in our community. Now therefore be resolved that the Orange County Legislature hereby recognizes the invaluable work performed by Safe Homes of Orange County for the prevention of domestic violence and designates October 2019 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, given this third day of October, signed by myself and the County Exec. Thank you for all you do. You want to say a few words? Thank you. Thank you very much. So on behalf of Safe Homes, our board of directors, I want to thank the legislator um, certainly for coming to the clothesline the other day and for always supporting us. Um, we couldn't do what we do without the support of the community and the county and being able to leverage those relationships and the faith that you have in us and the work that we do and did want to share. Um, although we added two more names to the list this year of 29 women murdered in this county since 2004. We are also doing some incredible things. And five years ago, I came and shared with you that we were in the process. We wish we didn't need another shelter, um, but the shovel went in the ground three weeks ago. And so in June of 2020, we'll have an additional 20 beds in the county to uh, shelter victims and their children. So thank you all those years ago for the support and um, the opportunity to be able to offer that in the county. And thank you for today as well, very much. Thank you again. Okay, just one item before we go to public participation. Uh, the plan is to move number 24 up to number one, which is the dam scammer resolution, because most people are here to speak to that. Uh, so if there are no objections, that will be done. Okay, public participation, we have how many speakers, Gene? 36. Um, everybody will stay within their three minutes. There will be no grace period today in the interest of time. Um, everybody be respectful. We, we want to hear your opinions. Um, no character assassinations. And for the record, state your name when you get up to speak, please, at the podium. First speaker is Gil Pequadio, uh, Supervisor Town of Newburgh. I got it? Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak today. Before I read my statement, let me say this, that sums it up perhaps. If a new fossil fuel plant was proposed in my town, I would oppose it. But currently we have an old, inefficient plant. And with the closing of Indian Point, a very good possibility, the old existing less efficient plant may be called upon to run more often. That is why I'm in favor of a repowered, more efficient plant, an air-cooled plant that will not discharge into the Hudson River. With that, what I'm going to read is actually a letter of support that was published in the New York and the Times Herald Record on June 16, 2019. 
There is a key component missing in our current discussions about renewable energy and addressing climate change. The simplest and most overlooked opinion option is to upgrade our much dependent on an existing energy infrastructure to be more environmentally friendly. This is where the dance camera plant in Newburgh plays an important role. Those making demands for 100% renewable energy fail to show the path we should take to get there. And the fact is, we are so far from our goals, stop gaps like improving the pieces of the grid we rely on today. As a necessary part of the plan, if we plan to keep moving in the right direction on climate change, according to the New York State Independent System Operator, New York ISO, which is responsible for the state's energy grid, in 2018, 5% of the electricity used in the state came from wind and solar power generation. In the last five years, New York has added only 100 megawatts of wind generation, and there is currently no wind projects under construction anywhere in the state. Couple this with the closing of Indian Point, nuclear power station, and the math is clear. Even at an accelerated pace, it would take many years, decades even, to meet the renewable goals being presented right now. Dance Gamer's proposal to repower its plants in the town of Newburgh to make it cleaner, more efficient, is good for the Hudson Valley, good for New York, and remember New York ISL will call on Dance Gamer to meet the state's aforementioned energy needs with or without a newer, cleaner facility. But the repowered plant will reduce emissions by 85% on a per megawatt hour basis the benefits are not just environmental. The project will create more than 450 union jobs during the construction phase, maintain more than 30 full-time jobs at the site, and maintain a $5 million payroll. Additionally, it would deliver more than $50 million in revenue to local governments and schools over a 20-year period. Along with myself, a large number of organizations with members that live with their families and work in the lower Hudson Valley, have vocalized support for the Dan Scammer repowering project, including, at that time, acting Orange County Executive Harry Poor, Marlboro Town Supervisor Al Lanzetta, Hudson Valley Building Trades, Orange County Partnership, the Construction Contractors Association. Thank you, Gil. You can submit the remainder of your speech. Okay, court. thank you. We'll keep it as part of the record. Okay. Hudson Valley Construction Industry Partnership. No, we got to stay within the three minutes. I was oh, that was a two-minute warning. Yeah, that was, okay. that, was a, that was three minutes. Next speaker. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. you can thank submit you. it. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. Alan Lanzetta, Supervisor, Town of Marlboro. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Al Lanzetta. I'm the supervisor of the town of Marlboro. I'm here to speak on behalf of my constituents, the taxpayers. I've lived in Marlboro for over 60 years. I remember when Central Hudson plant at Dan Scammer served as a financial cornerstone for the communities, especially the Marlboro School District, and employed about 120 union workers. I also remember when Dynergy purchased the plant and challenged their assessment. We saw our bills skyrocket. In one year, bills went up over 30%. We became the highest taxed district in upstate New York. While the initial shock has worn off, the effect has not. I speak with my members of our community, especially our seniors, who are struggling to keep their homes because they cannot afford their taxes. Young families are choosing to leave our community because they can't afford to stay. We are in need of relief. We would support the Dan Scammer Project, a new pilot that provides mutual agreed to a regular reimbursement to our school district. 
will help alleviate the tax burden weighing on our taxpayers. To know we have this additional tax base for more for next 20 years, we help, this will help Marlboro families and ensure quality education into the future. Thank you. Am I below the three minutes? Can I have uh, Gail come up? No? Okay. No, sorry. We're not bargaining. Sorry, Thank Gail, you very much, we're gentlemen. We're just taking three minutes. We've had, we have 36 speakers, so we're going to have to be strict with it. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, Zachary Constantine, Office of New York State, uh, or Gen Senator Jen Metzger. <coughs> My name is Zach Constantine on behalf of New York State Senator Jen Metzger. I'm from Goshen. Dear Chairman, Chairman Breska and members of the legislature, I understand that today you will be voting on a proposed resolution in support of a new power plant facility at the former Dan Scammer Energy Site in Newburgh. While Newburgh is just outside of the 42nd district that I represent, I would like to offer comments on behalf of my constituents in Orange County and as a member of the State Senate's Working Group on the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, which was signed into law in July of this year. This nation-leading legislation has set New York on a path to ending our reliance on fossil fuels and transitioning to clean energy generation. The legislation established targets of achieving 70% of New York's electricity from renewable resources by 2030 and a carbon-free electricity system by 2040. To meet these ambitious goals, it is important to avoid investments in new fossil fuel infrastructure, which have an expected lifespan of 50 years or more. A fundamental distinction between the proposed Dan Scammer power plant and the existing plant is that the proposed plant is intended to serve base load rather than peak load. The current Dan Scammer facility fires up only when called upon during times of peak demand. The proposed plant, by contrast, would serve daily electricity demand and run 24 seven. Dan Scammer Energy LLC argues that the plant is needed to fill the gap created by the planned closure of Indian Point nuclear reactors in 2020 and 2021 respectively. However, the 2019 Comprehensive Reliability Report of the New York State Independent System Operator identified no reliability needs for the next decade, even after taking into account the closure of Indian Point. This point bears repeating. NISO, the organization charged with managing New York's electricity grid and ensuring grid reliability, has determined that existing resources are adequate to meet electricity demand. Moreover, NISO's reliability report only considered generation resources that had already been permitted at the time of study and therefore did not take into account the two contracts awarded in July of this year for combined capacity of 700 megawatts of clean offshore wind power, which is expected to come online in 20, uh, 2024. This represents a megawatt capacity more than three times that of the proposed Dan Scammer facility. The urgency of climate change and the passage of the state's Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act require us to act swiftly to end our reliance on fossil fuels and prioritize investments in renewable energy, energy efficiency, and such demand management technologies as storage. I understand the desire to create good paying construction jobs and I'm confident that we will see a substantial increase in job opportunities with the enormous investments that are required in order to meet New York's ambitious goals, including investments in utility scale renewable energy and storage resources as well as the grid infrastructure necessary to support these resources. I want to close by congratulating Orange County on its recent bronze certification as a climate smart community and by noting that the county government is making good progress towards reducing its own greenhouse gas emissions. I urge the county to stay the course. Sincerely, State Senator Jen Metzger, 42nd District. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next speaker, Valerie, please. Valerie Luznikowski. I believe, sorry, agenda item number 24. If I mispronounced that, I'm sorry. No, I asked them if, uh, if they wanted me to write it down phonetically and they said don't, not to bother. <laughs> <laughs> I know Mr. Yurishkevich knows the problem, right? <laughs> uh, I'm here as uh, just an independent citizen, although I do belong to a lot of community organizations. Government bribery and corruption are in the minds of everyone these days, and this letter that I'm about to read of June 21st to the Daily Freeman is especially pungent in light of the Dance Camera case. Quote, Dance Camera LLC has proposed that a little used facility bordering the Hudson River in Newburgh be converted into a year-round frack gas power plant. It has sent a $20,000 housewarming gift. This came in the form of a donation to the town of Marlboro for quote-unquote beautification projects, 
supposedly spurred by the desire to be a quote-unquote good neighbor. Again, this is all in the letter that I'm quoting. It amounts to little more than bribery, and it is clear evidence of the uneven ground on which citizens and corporations stand in today's world. I am a high school student. I have a deeply vested interest in whether the dance camper plant is approved or not. Air quality in the Hudson Valley is already rated C or D by the American Lung Association, contributing to high rates of childhood asthma. Dance, dance camera threatens to make it worse. Beyond this, dance camera will continue to, to climate, uh, will contribute to climate change, scorching the world that my generation will inherit. The plan also contradicts Governor Andrew Cuomo's stated goal of 100% clean energy in New York by 2040. I don't have $20,000 to throw around, and neither do most people. Our system does not afford ordinary citizens, i.e. those who are impacted the most, the same influence as special interests. I can only hope that Cuomo will act to preserve the well-being of the people and my future over Dan Scammer's profit margin, and it's signed by Nachman Call Seidman of uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. Now, that's the end of his letter, and now this is what I'm adding. Even the appearance of impropriety on the part of the Dan Scammer producers should be of immediate concern to this legislature. I am not a young person who will inherit the full effects of climate crisis. I will only live long enough to see escalating and terrible extremes of weather before I die. But I ask this body to heed the words of this young man and of Greta Thunberg and consider their own children and all those who will live with the consequences of furthering the use of fossil fuels. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Next speaker is Henry Carlock, Senior President. Gypsy, agenda item number 24. Thank you, Chair. My name is Haley Carlock. I'm the Director of Environmental Advocacy for Scenic Hudson. I did submit a letter previously in writing, which I hope you've had a chance to review. I'm not going to read through it now, but just go through a few key points um, that I think refute some of the myths surrounding the dance camera proposal and the supposed benefits that it would bring to your communities and to the county as a whole. Dance camera is not needed to supply energy when Indian Point closes. Uh, Senator Metzger's letter mentioned before that the 2018 NISO reliability needs assessment determined in no uncertain terms that without a new dance camera, when Indian Point goes offline, there are currently sufficient resources to ensure the reliability of our electric grid for at least the next 10 years. And that's from the entity that's in charge of ensuring reliability, and believe me, they take that quite seriously. You also heard from some other speakers that perhaps when Indian Point goes offline, the old dance camera plant, which we all acknowledge is, is quite old and inefficient and barely runs at this time, would be called upon to run more. That's extraordinarily unlikely. There are wind projects totaling almost 2,000 megawatts, including 1,700 megawatts of offshore wind currently in the queue. Um, that 1,700 megawatts is expected to come online around 2023, approximately the same time frame as this plant, and there's several hundred megawatts of onshore wind, one project under construction, several others fully permitted. In addition, there's about 3,000 megawatts of solar projects currently in Article 10, several of those with the potential of accompanying battery storage. Again, these are projects that would come online during this period of time and would more than make up for any potential shortfall that would require the old, inefficient, dirty dance camera plant to ever, ever operate as a baseload facility. That's simply not reality. Also, the air emissions of the new plan are of grave concern. There's no doubt that it'll be more efficient than the old plant. It certainly will be. However, it will run as a baseload facility, meaning it will be available to run 24-7. The existing plant runs a handful of times a year on the order of 8 to 11 days a year since 2014. The new plant would run nearly all the time. In official filings to the State Siting Board on Electric Generation and Environment, Dan's camera has written that the new plant could be up to 40% more efficient than the old one. I've seen in today's resolution there's some clauses that claim much more aggressive um, emissions reductions, and if those are accurate, I as a, an intervener and party in the Article 10 proceeding have not seen any studies or evidence to, to support those claims. That even if it were 80% more efficient, 
than the existing plant, the emissions would still increase about five-fold over the current plant simply due to the increase in running time. This will worsen the air quality in Orange County. And finally, jobs. We all want to see job creation. We all want to see a booming economy and rateables come to our struggling communities. However, the clean energy sector can supply these jobs just as well, if not better, than a new fossil fuel facility that brings with it damage to our environment and our communities. The clean energy sector saw a 9% gain in employment growth in the year 2018. That's over twice the employment growth, and that's in the state of New York as other sectors, and employed in 2018 159,000 workers. There are other, more sustainable ways that we can bring jobs, we can bring tax rateables, we can bring uh, sustainable economic growth to our communities. Uh, and for those reasons, and all of the reasons you'll hear from other speakers today, I would urge you to vote no on today's resolution in support of the facility, but if you're on the fence, if you see some potential for benefits, if you're not quite sure whether this would be a good Thank thing, you. Thank you. Next speaker, Althea Martin. Um, I live in the village of Walden. When my family retired in the military after 20 years of traveling around the United States, we chose to come to live in the Hudson Valley to live. We have never regretted it. However, I must share with you, when I came here, my youngest daughter, who's now 23, was three years old. By the time she was seven, eight years old, she had developed asthma and was really struggling with it. When I went to the pediatrician and I asked him, why was my daughter, why does my daughter have asthma? No one in my family, no one in my husband's family has asthma. And he looked at me and he said, you live in Orange County in the Hudson Valley. Why is this a surprise to you? That's when I really became interested in environmental issues, specifically air quality. You heard it mentioned that Orange County recently received a C from the American Lung Association for Air Quality. The facts are much more dire, and I urge you to look carefully at some of the materials that I also sent you um, in a prior email and look at them carefully, especially the pediatricians and the doctors who are treating the people in Orange County with conditions like asthma and COPD. I urge you to make your decision about supporting or not supporting this plant based on the facts. Don't build a plant that we don't need that could potentially cause a lot more problems for Orange County when we don't need to do that. And I'd like to finish what my colleague Haley Carlock was saying, that if you decide you don't want to vote no today, at least table this. The stipulations process that's undergoing right now that Cena Cutson is intervening in is a fact-finding mission. Not what somebody is telling you on paper or mentioning to you in a private conversation, but facts. Dance Kemmer has to submit studies, has to do all kinds of things that they have not yet done. And we will know after the stipulations process and those studies are done what the impacts are going to be. Until then, I urge you, if you don't vote no today, table this resolution and wait that process out and get the facts before you make a decision. Thank you. Yeah. Next speaker, Randolph first from Slay Hill, Sierra Club. Uh, Group Consolidation. Randy Hurst, <clears throat> on behalf of the Raymond Poe Catskill Group Conservation Committee, Sierra Club. You do not have to vote on this resolution today. You can table it until Dan Scammer files their Article 10 application, which provides the information concerning the environmental, economic, social, and public health impacts of the project. It seems in, uh, premature to vote on this resolution, also without information on the cumulative energy production, environmental and health implications of Dan Scammer, along with the other four power plants in the Hudson Valley. <clears throat> Not to mention the, the emissions that, are, are, that come from the Millennium uh, gas and other gas pipelines and compressor stations, and from the other polluters in the county. This is critical as Orange County is now an increasingly, has an increasing smog and is in and is an air quality non-attainment zone. Dan Scammer representatives and marketing has put, a, put out false information about the need for this plant. That point has already been addressed and, and my testimony is, is already part of the record, so I'm not gonna belabor that point. But I will tell you that there is absolutely no need for this plant. Science also has documented that emissions from frack gas facilities especially threaten the elderly and children of which I am one of those. 
and they, these are most vulnerable to the illness and death from the particulate matter, endocrine disruptors, volatile organic compounds, nitrous oxide, toluene, benzene, formaldehyde, just to mention a few of the toxins that will be added to our already compromised air, and, uh, and, and it will be yet another uh, from another uh, gas fuel power plant. Given this, you also can vote no on the resolution and stand up for your constituents' health and welfare. Further, the public subsidies and property tax relief uh, abatements that are proposed for the new Dan Scammer, in addition to those subsidies currently paid to support the existing plan, they must be documented. The current, the current Dan Scammer plan is fully functioning and profitable making grossing over $30 million annually, and it emits little pollution, operating only at, to serve peak need. The new plant will operate full time, and it will add massive pollution to our already compromised air. The new Dan Scammer plant will also compete with, with and, and undermine the financial viability of the adjacent roaster power, roast and power plant. Uh, and this will also impact the Marlboro School District's uh, budget, and also the county's. So the prospect and the prospect of Rosen's bankrupt and total closure is totally pro probable. Before you vote, you have to ask yourselves, will the fossil fuel industry remain competitive and financially viable given the current uh, efficient transmission and renewable energy production projects now underway? There are many, and I'm not gonna belabor them at this point because it's already documented in my testimony, but to cut to the chase, the real competitive competition to the fossil fuel industry is outlined in the Solutions Project, which provides a roadmap to convert all 50 of the United States to 100% wind, water, and solar for all purposes. It documents that over 45,000 lives would be saved by eliminating deaths due to air pollution, saving hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars by reducing health care and catastrophic climate disaster costs. It also documents that 4.1 million jobs will be created for 40 Next speaker is a, years. Wakale is the last name. I can't read the first name. Thank you, sir, for your time. Years. Appreciate it. Next speaker. Uh, hi, my name is Jurgen Weckerly. I'll continue on the same theme that Randy just presented. We are both representing the Ramapo Catskill Conservation Committee of the Sierra Club. The, when is a really, really good power plant not a good idea? When it's not needed. That's the whole point. What will it do in terms of the other existing power plants? Now we have a question of the neighboring Roseton. There's only so much power that's actually consumed. The whole idea of deregulation is to promote oversupply and have the different generators compete with each other. The more expensive generators will not have their bids accepted in the ISO auction market and they'll go out of business. Have we seen that show before? Yes, we have. We've had Dan Scammer and Rosen go bankrupt. We've had Lovett and Bowline go bankrupt. And we just have these reaffirming, re cycling bankruptcies going on right now. The jobs, the new dance camera plant will not create any additional jobs and may barely absorb the existing jobs transferred from the old plant when it closes. There will be new jobs in terms of the outside work crews that will construct the plant. But when that's over, they're gone. Those are not local residents paying local taxes. The issue of competition. The, the, um, Indian Point has been replaced with what's being in production right now, okay? That includes the repowering of Bowline. That includes the transmission upgrades already in place around the Westchester area. 2,000 megawatts have been accounted for to offset the Indian Point closure. None of that includes the 700 some odd megawatts of CPV or the 1100 megawatts of Cricket Valley. None of that includes the 1000 megawatts of the transmission upgrade proceedings currently underway that has to be put in place. None of that includes the prospect of 1000 megawatts 
of the Champlain Hudson Power Express being actually constructed and implemented. Where is all that extra supply going other than eating into other power plants here for that same market? Okay, that is one thing. We, we had a, a very good example of that right now where <laughs> the Cricket Valley Power Plant is opposing the upgrades of the transmission system in the Hudson Valley. That transmission system upgrades is needed to get Cricket Valley's power to market. But they're saying but that'll also invite other competitors to use it and put us out of business. They're not even built yet, but they know what the total supply demand ratio is, what the capabilities are. We have all this solar going on right now locally. In the town of Montgomery, we have three uh, community solar projects being constructed. They're already constructed. That's 15 megawatts right there. We have 300 megawatts of a power plant by Next Era. Who is Next Era? They're one of the biggest power companies in the country. It's Florida Power and Light doing business here in New York. We, we have the owners of Bowline and Dunkirk Upstate and Somerset Upstate and RG with Queens Power Plant. They are into the solar. Next speaker, Robert Kaler, Pareco Electric, on agenda item number 24. Mr. Chairman, legislators, thanks for this opportunity to speak to you. My name is Robert Kaler. I'm the president of Pareco Electric in Newburgh, uh, founded in 1949, been there ever since. Uh, Dan Scammer has been a, a good neighbor to us. Uh, I have people regularly employed there all the time for over 30 years. And I think that their plant is going to be efficient. It's going to be state of the art. And I disagree with some of the people that spoke today. It's, it's very much needed. And the, the wind farms that we're talking about, I think that the, they're very optimistic that they're going to be in line in, in 23. My guess is going to be 25 or 26. And how much of that power is going to be earmarked for us? How much is going to Jersey? and how much is going to New England. So we don't know that. That's all out in the wind someplace, so to say. The other thing is we're talking about solar. All right, solar is going to be the replacement, OK? There's six villages and towns in Orange County that's got a moratorium against solar. You can't have it both ways. All right, we need the generation. And quite frankly, if you're going to rely on solar, we'd be having this meeting in candlelight. Thank you. Next speaker, Suzanne May, regarding agenda item number 24. Hi, my name is Suzanne May, and I appreciate the opportunity to address you, address you today. I've been employed as an engineer at the Dan Scammer facility since 2014, and I've lived in the area for the past 18 years. I've invested a great deal in this community, and I care deeply about the area and my neighbors. So did the other 35 employees at the plant. Every Thanksgiving, we run a food drive through local schools to provide meals for local families in need. We also hold an annual Adopt-A-Family each Christmas through local schools. And I can honestly and truthfully say that Dan Scamber shares these community-oriented values in big and small ways. Recently, the company donated $20,000 to the town of Marlboro for beautification efforts. And you will be hearing more in the near future about the establishment of a foundation that will help ensure Dan Scammer's community giving for years to come. None of these things are mandated or required, but the company believes that part of being a good member of the business community means supporting the larger community. <clears throat> That's also, also accomplished through the good paying jobs at the plant. <coughs> the annual payroll of Dan Scammer is $5 million, money that gets spent in the area. It gets spent in the area because we live there, raise our families there, and pay taxes. Dan Scammer has afforded me the opportunity to raise my family and provide a good life for them while working close to the home I love. That's why it's sometimes very discouraging to hear misinformation about what we do being thrown around. I can tell you I would not, nor would any of my coworkers work at a facility that did not have the highest standards for safety and compliance with environmental regulations. New York has among the most stringent energy, energy industry regulations in the world. 
And that's why the process to conduct this modernization project is lengthy, very detailed, and will be reviewed very thoroughly by the state. <coughs> that's something that we welcome because this review will outline clearly the benefits of the project. Over the years, Dance Camera has become more efficient and reduced its emissions, first by moving from coal to oil, then oil to natural gas. Now we want to take the next step and upgrade the plant to be more efficient with the latest technology that's available. I am in support of this, and not because it means job security. It's going to reduce emissions even further, eliminate the use of Hudson River for cooling needs, and allow us to deliver energy quickly and on demand. Right now it takes us 11 hours to power up, time we're creating emissions, but not energy. As a local re resident, why would I not support these improvements? As an electrical customer, why would I not want to ensure power grid operators have diverse and efficient options to work with when it comes to meeting my energy needs? I encourage you to consider the large number of your constituents who are in support of an expanded tax base, good jobs, corporate responsibility, and peace of mind afforded by cleaner, reliable electricity. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, Ed Hall, on the rebirth regarding agenda item number 24. Good afternoon, my name is Ed Hall. I currently live in the town of Newburgh in the Marlboro School District. I've lived in the area my entire life and I am currently the plant manager at Dan Scamper. <clears throat> I've been in the energy, energy business locally for, since 1971. I've been an employee of Dan Scamper since 1975 and held many positions for my career. I retired in 2011, returned to Dan Scamper 13 to create a, a restoration plan to bring the plant back to to service after Hurricane Sandy in 2012. The plan was executed successfully and the plan was returned to service in 2014 and also gave it, I also had an opportunity to create some good middle class jobs for the local community, the people that we that were laid off at Dance Hammer. <coughs> Dance Hammer's been very good to me during my family over the 40 years, 40 plus years I've worked there. So I'll be able to send both my kids to good colleges in New York State. Both are now good, productive, working members of society. Thank God. And I also have uh, made many, many good friends over the years at Dance Camera, worked with many bright individuals. Dance Camera has paid millions of dollars in local taxes since it started back operating in 1951. The plan has kept our local electric rates lower by being able to burn the cheapest fuel available over, over the years. <clears throat> they have also reinvested a lot of money into the plant and the community. I would like to point out a few, take a few, I would like to point out a few significant differences between Dance Scammer now and the new Dance Scammer. The current Dance Scammer is four units built in the 50s and 60s that have a large boiler that makes steam to, to power a turbine, basically is what it is. The technology for steam turbines between the 40s and the 80s has not changed much. But the, the technology has changed on the boiler side, or they're, they're creating steam. The new plant will be have a gas turbine, will be, will be producing megawatts within an hour. The old plant takes 10 to 12 hours to produce one megawatt. A lot of, a lot of emissions going up into the air without getting any megawatts out of it. So the new plant will reduce emissions, <coughs> reduce, uh, will eliminate taking water from the Hudson River, it'll consume less power, and it'll reduce, it'll, it'll reduce the running of more inefficient plants you know, in, the, in, the, in the state. The, the new plant will have a positive in, impact on both short and term, our economy, uh, short and long term for our economy. I'm a little nervous as you can tell. Um, all of us in the region will benefit from the jobs that it will create and the taxes it will pay. The money will be spent locally and the 36 employees that currently work at Dance Camera certainly support the project. Many of these employees were laid off by Dynagy and the plant was closed in 12 and all of them are now looking to for a long career at Dance Camera. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Michelle Hook. Uh, dance camera resolution. Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Hook with Dance Gammer. I'd like to start by saying that Dance Gammer applauds those who are passionate about the environment. And contrary to what you might hear, we are as well. But just saying no to things is not a solution. 
It's not a solution to climate change, and it's not a solution to the Lower Hudson Valley's power needs. And in the coming years, that need's going to increase when other regional plants come offline. There isn't any wind or solar or transmission right now that will replace what we are about to lose. What Dan Scammer is offering is a solution. No, it's not perfect. And yes, there are emissions, but it is a step in the right direction. Making our existing energy infrastructure more efficient is an improvement. It does lower emissions. It does rely less on natural gas. And it does get us closer to reaching our climate goals. Because right now, the alternative is to let older plants run to fill in that gap. That is what the opposition is saying to you when they tell you to say no to the new Dan Scammer, and it's not a solution. Opposition groups will tell you we don't need a new power plant, and they're right. We don't. But without one, older plants, including the old Dan Scammer, will run more to pick up the slack. So it's a choice. This should not be a partisan issue. It should be about the facts. And I won't bog you down with a lot of numbers in these few minutes, but all due respect, Ms. Carlock was wrong about our emissions. Even if the new Dan Scammer runs 70% of the time, preliminary studies show that the new Dan Scammer would reduce regional carbon dioxide by about 280,000 tons. That's the equivalent of taking 54,000 cars off the road. And that's just annually. Compound that over a decade, and you're looking at an improvement of 2.8 million tons of carbon dioxide. How? Because it's replacing three old natural gas plants and an out-of-state coal power that's still being used to supply the lower Hudson Valley. It would be a 56% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. It's also a significant reduction in nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and particulate matter. Those are the chemicals that cause the respiratory problems and the severe climate change. The DEC is going to analyze all of these emissions numbers and they'll be available to the public in November. I am also offering to personally meet with each one of you to review that information. We unfortunately cannot get to zero emissions today or even tomorrow. It's not possible with the technology we have available today. But what we can do is get halfway there until that is possible. So please help Dan Scammer to be part of the solution. Thank you. Next speaker, Todd DiOrio, President of Hudson Valley Dillon Trades, regarding agenda item number 24. Thank you. I'm Todd DiOrio, President of Hudson Valley Building Construction Trades Council. I represent uh, 28 uh, trade locals and about 10,000 members in the counties of Orange, Ulster, Sullivan, and Dutchess County. Just to show of hands, how many members here uh, from the building trades today? Uh, how, many, how many guys not in the building trades that actually support this project? And the building trades? Oh, wait, do that for the Hey, shut, the, shut up over there. <laughs> um, I want to thank um, the Chairman Brescia, and I want to thank all the legislators that actually took the time to meet with us. We didn't get a chance to meet with them all, but they did take the time to learn about this project. The support for this project is, there's a lot of support out there. You heard from various Hudson Valley Building Trades, the Orange County Partnership, CIC, CCA, New Yorkers for Affordable Energy, Council of Industry, Hudson Valley Labor Management Alliance, the Hudson Valley Construction Industry Partnership, the local support you've seen from Town of Marlboro, the school district, um, and the town of New, um, Newburgh where it's located. I'm also live in that Marlboro school district, so I'm familiar with this plant, born and raised there, worked there, built the, one of the plants, did some renovation there. The political support also, uh, Newhouse, Al Lanzetta, Marlboro Schools, Gil Paquadio, uh, Colin Schmidt, Rich Jarantine, Sean Maloney, uh, Elaine Gunther, and I, I assume, and I've spoke a lot, they're right now weighing it out, but uh, J I expect Jacobson and Scoofus both to support this project. Uh, jobs, the early commitment from day one, we met with Bill Reed. Uh, they've committed to a project labor agreement, all union. There was no negotiation. They weren't beating us down on rates and benefits and conditions. We have a project labor agreement in place, 450 to $500 million project, 30 months of construction, full wages and benefits. Uh, how many of you guys could be looking for jobs uh, in 18 months from now? We never know where our next job is. That's why it's so important. Uh, Long-term jobs, uh, the plant is going to the wages they make there right now are, are very good. They're very highly paid guys. And they talk about construction being short term. The construction never ends on these, on these plants. I mean, it's always maintenance. There's constant maintenance going on. Even now, the new plant CPV, we're constantly doing stuff. I'm not going to get into a lot of the details. You know, the CLCPA, uh, we're, we're not against renewables. We're in favor of renewables. That's the future. We get that. Uh, but you got to remember, this is sometimes the CLCPA is a political move. They have these goals of 2030, 2040, and 2050. 
even the governor who pushed this isn't sure that these goals could be met. And they leave some language in there that allows it to be reopened in case these goals can't be met. It's great for the governor because, you know, he's not going to be around in 2030 anyway, so this looks good on, on his resume. But the governor also said this. Uh, governor Andrew Cuomo stated on July 19, 2019, that fossil fuel infrastructure is not at odds with the state's goals right now. We cannot do away with traditional generation sources until we have alternate, alternatives available, and right now they are not. And he added, you cannot end fossil fuels until you have an alternative. Not, like I said, I'm not getting into the details of the projects. You've all heard it. This project fits the goals of New York. It bridges the gap to renewables. And people are asking why the resolution. We didn't want to start going around to every town and doing residents. I met with some of these groups. They went behind our back, started some of these resolutions. They asked why we're here. We need to show that there's support out there. We weren't looking to start a contest on who can get the most resolutions. But we do support um, you guys passing a resolution. It's very important to us that we know there's support out there. Uh, we appreciate the support we get, the building trades. This, a lot of you guys here have been great with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next speaker, Amber Grant. Uh, she's from the Beacon City Council. And for the record, before you start, Amber, we won't start your term. We have six letters of support for the project and two against up here, too, for the record. Okay, one is from the Council of Industry, for example. Go ahead, Amber. Now Thank we'll start you. the clock. I'm also here with Nick Page from the Dutchess County Legislator. We have a uh, letter to enter into the record signed by many of his colleagues opposing the build out. So I'm not sure who to give that to, but. Uh, my name is Amber Grant. I'm a member of the Beacon City Council. I'm here because the surrounding areas like Beacon will be subject to the repercussions of this plant and its impact on health and air quality in our region. You may be aware that when faced with the issue of making a statement regarding Dan's camera, the Beacon City Council opposed this after hearing from multiple stakeholders. And I urge this legislative body to do the same. Take into consideration more than the viewpoint of those that stand to profit. Please don't lock the beautiful Hudson Valley into yet a third fossil fuel burning plant that will operate past many of our lifetimes because we don't need that. Um, this lack of need is an important and proven data set provided by the New York Independent System Operator. You've heard from several people of this fact. It takes into account the closure of Indian Point and it takes into account not building out a new dance scammer. This also directly contradicts our state's goals to be a climate leader and increase renewable energy. And I totally appreciate that these goals are challenging, but we will never ever achieve them by doing the same thing over and over again and continuing to rely on fossil fuels. We've worked hard in Beacon and the surrounding communities to provide 100% renewable energy to our residents and local solar energy through community choice aggregation. So I know that it is possible to choose a different path and it is absolutely the duty of elected officials to use their power for good and to do the hard things. If we don't take action and continue to be okay with the status quo, there is no hope for a brighter future, or maybe even a future for the generations that follow. I urge, I urge this body to think not just of tax revenues and what is in store for us today, but what we leave for today's children as our legacy. And when you do that, I'm sure you cannot find it in good conscience to support this. I hope you will either choose to remain neutral or do the hard but right thing and say enough is enough, and we do not need another fossil fuel burning plant here. Thank you. To yeah. whom can I give this letter? Our next speaker is Michael Vanderborn of West Town on agenda item number 24. Mike Vanderborn, Town of Menacing. Thank you for letting me speak today. Um, I wanted to be a voice to the people of Pennsylvania in Ohio, uh, the other end of where this frack gas is being extracted. We segment secret. We only look at what we look in front of us. Statement of opposition to Dan Scamma Energy Center by Karen Farrenden, founder of Burke's Gas Truth, co-founder of Better Gas Coalition, Cutstown, Pennsylvania. I am submitting this statement to urge you to reject plans for Dan Scamma Energy Center. Power plants are built to last at least 40 years far beyond the time that we can afford to use fossil fuels to produce energy. But I am submitting this to address in particular another crisis already unfolded in my state of Pennsylvania and others that have been profoundly impacted by shale gas development. 
Pennsylvania is widely viewed as the example of what not to do when regarding shale gas development. We have been visited by journalists, researchers, students, faith leaders, and elected officials from around the world who want their tour of gas land. And they see what they see changes them. Our farmlands and forests have become an industrial wasteland in many parts of the state. Families have been left out without clean water in their homes for years by companies that are not being held account for their actions. Some of these families and many others rely upon air monitors and air scrubbers to do what they can to safeguard themselves and their children from the toxins in the air and in the water. Some have watched their property values go up in smoke. Others have seen their homes literally go up in smoke. I can go on and on, but the roughly 1,800 peer-related studies summarized in the publication that originated here in New York tell a far worse detail. I am on my way to the shale fields of southwestern Pennsylvania to attend a public meeting in one of several school districts and four rural counties are the, on the spike, a rare childhood cancer has been diagnosed. We know of at least 67 cases. 27 of these cases uh, are the very rare bone cancer, Ewan sarcoma. 13 of the 67 young people have died. Our government is provided no answers to the parents who want to know what happened to their children and to the countless others who want to know what they need to do to ensure that the kids won't be cancer patients by the time they graduate from high school. Since shale gas development began, we have had no champions in Harrisburg. One of the current proposals from our reckless governor is an infrastructure spending plan that would guarantee 20 more years of drilling and frack to pay for it. Some of these kids in southwestern PA don't get 20 years. I am telling you all of this because you need to understand the full consequence of the actions that you take on this proposal. If you approve it, you push us all closer to the climate precipice and you condemn people in my state to more shale gas development than they can take. I'm sure you hear the testimony during this hearing from people in your community who are concerned about toxic air, safety risk, and all other things that make power plants horrible neighbors. Believe them. When you do right by your constituents, you do right by future generations everywhere and people in the crosshairs of shale gas development who need someone somewhere making conscientious decisions that put people first. Yet surely someone will provide the jobs, jobs, jobs argument. I can tell you that the jobs numbers have never lived up to the hype here. Don't fall for it. Thank you. In December 17, 2014, Mario Como banned, he put a moratorium on frack gas in New York State. These kids deserve the same. Next speaker. Peter Sam, Mr. Sam. Orange wrap. Andrew Sam, orange wrap. Is she here? Saw her out there. Sandra, there you are, I see you. My name is Sandra Kassam, a citizen of the town of Newburgh for over 40 years, and um, also a union member, teachers, special education. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm looking at a paper with all these words crossed out because much of what I plan to say no longer seemed relevant. So bear with me, I will do my best. We would not be considering this project today if it weren't for the fact that a federal agency, FERC, has created a special, a special condition called a capacity zone. A capacity zone was a device that would make it profitable for companies such as Dance Camber Energy LLC to come up to the Hudson Valley because essentially a capacity zone guarantees profits. Uh, and so they are here. The company does not resent, represent local people. It represents people who are in the financial business, many of whom have ties to um, the Koch brothers and others who are leaders in 
preserving and, and, and engaging in continued production of oil and gas, which is the industry which could finally do us in if we permit them to. We are at a very crucial time in history. I uh, don't want to uh, become philosophical because I know that many of you uh, are thinking about the practical matters of what we are looking at today. But the fact of the matter is that those who look forward to providing a market for the fracked gas that the gentleman who just spoke previously, just now, before I stood up, they need markets for this product. And so if they can create gas plants, gas burning plants here in New York State, they will have found markets and they will have set precedents that even in this time of serious climate concerns, we can still go ahead and do business as usual. I must say that what is happening today may not happen tomorrow. We are at a point in time where we cannot make our judgments based on yesterday or even today. We are in for surprises and they will come soon. And we must take action now while we can. It is absolutely, absolutely essential that even though what you're planning to do now is not really legally binding, but is really more a symbol of your, of your intent, that you do not pass this resolution supporting this company. If you, if you need to believe in solutions, it is entirely possible that the company is not providing this or will not provide the solutions you wish, namely financial. May I point out to you that for years, just as an example, everyone wanted a casino in Sullivan County. It was the, it was the Messiah. It was going to save Sullivan County and corporate promoted Sullivan County casino. And what has happened to that casino? We must get past this notion that corporate is our solution, that corporate is going to give us everything that they promise. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Uh, Earl Johnson, Newberg, Dan Scammer. Hi. Uh, my name is Pearl Johnson, and I am a property owner in Middle Hope, which is about two miles from Dan Scammer, and in the Marlboro School District. I'm one of those um, seniors on a fixed income who would love to have lower taxes, but not at the cost of poisoning my community and my grandchildren. I don't know a lot of the technical stuff or the statistics here, but I know that fracking is a toxic, horrible process that New York State has banned for good reason and I can't understand why we want to become a market for that product. It is bad for our environment, bad for our people, bad for everybody here, union or no. Um, I, I have nightmares about us becoming Elizabeth, New Jersey, and nobody wants to live there because it stinks. Um, union workers need jobs. We know they need jobs. It is something that as leaders in our community, we expect you to help us with. But I'm hearing that there are no wind projects in New York State. There are other things not going on. And I think we need to look to our leaders to help find those projects to provide the good union jobs that we need here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, When I look at this need for work, why not build energy storage facilities? Why not look to the construction of solar and wind farms? We need healthier sources. And I know there's some skepticism about, OK, they don't always work. We're on the eastern grid. We don't have to worry about our lights going off or our TV not turning on. We are connected to that grid, and we're looking to our leaders to make sure that grid is functional. I heard somebody else mention more plants are going offline. I wonder why. Communities do not want to continue toxic spewing factories, structures in their communities. Um, my husband made me look up something here. 
The 2017 U.S. Energy and Employment Report finds that traditional energy, the gas coal sectors, they only increased by about 5%. The solar workforce increased by 25%, while wind employment increased by 32%. Why are we looking backwards? We need to look to the future. Um, oh, I wish it were true, all the things that they're promising, uh, what's going to come out of Dan Scammer. But it's like holding on to a dinosaur. We need to look forward. We need to have leaders to help us find those solid jobs for our workers in our community, not things that will poison our community, but will build our whole community and our whole structure. And I guess that's what I wanted to say. Next speaker, Gina Angelo, mover, agenda item 24. Thanks, Pearl. I feel like I'm following Elvis. <laughs> All right. Um, good afternoon. My name is Gina Angelo, and I live in the town of Newburg, where I grew up, and I am a proud union member. Um, thank you for the opportunity today to speak out in opposition of the Dan Scammer plant. I would like to talk about a tale of two plants. Dan Scammer is currently a peaker facility, meaning it operates less than 5% of the time, providing energy only during periods of high demand. With that said, in 2009, the EPA reported that the current Dan Scammer plant dumped more than 1.5 million pounds of toxic chemicals into Newburgh's land and water. Even if the proposed plant is cleaner burning, is cleaner burning than the current plant, it will operate virtually nonstop, spewing more carbon and emissions of harmful nitrogen oxides, ozone, particulate matter, and sulfur dioxide into our air than the existing one, increasing pollution, endangering our health, and accelerating climate change. I believe that a much better choice would be for Orange County to invest in sustainable energy proje projects, such as wind and solar, offering comparable jobs in construction and plant operation for my brothers and sisters in labor and a healthier future for our children. Please be the leaders who will guide us into a cleaner future. Please vote no or table this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Manager Green, number 24. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Manager Green. I am the Environmental Director for Hudson River Sloop Clearwater, and I also serve on the Ulster County Legislature. Uh, it's come to my attention that folks in Orange County think that Ulster County is more advanced or progressive. I don't think that's the case. I, what I want you to think about is your children and your grandchildren Climate change is not going to affect Orange County differently than it affects Ulster County. We're all in this together, and we are in a climate emergency. Um, I serve, I chair Energy and Environment, and tonight we're looking at a resolution sponsored by two Republicans from Saugerties declaring a climate emergency. We are in a climate emergency, you see it when you turn the television on, and that's only a fraction of what's going on around the world in terms of fires, massive fire, forest fires, some man-made, uh, as in the Amazon, but all the storms and the fires and the flooding in Miami, and I could name every state, and we've used just about every alphabet uh, to name the storms. Um, the other thing, I, I want to mention is that I also serve on public works and capital projects. And there we are getting three and four applications for pilots for large solar projects, two megawatts to 20 megawatts. We're getting three or four a month. A year ago, it was rare. Now, it's the amount of solar that is scaling up in this region, I know that some of your towns have moratoria, and I hope they will, re they will change that. But in the entire Hudson Valley, it is scaling up massively and rapidly. 
It, we have got to transition to renewable energy with solar, uh, rather with storage and efficiency. That's the salvation. And I want to say that the unions are aware of this. They see the handwriting on the wall. There's a very good example in Holyoke, Massachusetts, where they switched from coal to solar and storage and retained all the workers. This is real, this is now, it's no longer down the road. It really is happening. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that in Ulster County, there was a proposal for glide path that was going to be a peaker plant with storage. And the community said, enough is enough. Like Beacon said, enough is enough. And now it's going to be a large storage facility for the solar that is rapidly coming on board. And I think that's about all I'm going to say right now. But I, I really ask you to think about the situation that you see when you turn your television on or you go on Facebook or any of the sources of information that you have that are telling you that the way we did things in the past, depending on fossil fuel for the last 100 years, depending on nuclear power for the last 50 years, which leaves nuclear waste, ask the people in Peekskill if they now think nuclear is a good idea. Uh, and the last thing I want to say since I mentioned that is in terms of Indian Point, that uh, uh, 1,700 off uh, megawatts of offshore wind and 1,250 uh, megawatts of improvements in the grid uh, are going to more than offset Thank you. Indian Point. We've been on public participation for an hour. I'd like to try to finish it up in a half an hour um, because we've got quite a bit of debate on this topic just among the legislators alone. Uh, we have 38 speakers and we're at, at number 20 now. So let's, we'll try to finish it up by 10 after if we can. Okay? Amy Kleider, um, Ulster activist, agenda item 24. Hi, thank you for letting me speak today about my concern about the plan as well. My name is Amy Clatter, I live in New Paltz, and I'm here representing myself and also Ulster activists. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had something written out too, and just listening to everybody else's, um, you know, what they had to say, I was thinking it wasn't really what I wanted to say. Most of those things have been said. Um, personally, I am a person who has developed asthma since I moved to the Hudson Valley. My mother developed it too. Um, so that's a personal concern. Um, but I want to talk to you about a couple of things that have come up as people have been speaking. A few people have talked about the fracked um, gas um, projects in Pennsylvania and how detrimental they are to the people there. And the fact that New York State decided it was so detrimental that we banned it. Remember that we banned it. But you're talking about, like that gentleman was talking about, maintaining that market right, in Pennsylvania for something that we have decided is a bad thing. But you're also talking about transporting it. So that means that fracked gas has to be pipelined here, it has to be brought on trains, or it has to be brought on trucks. And you guys have probably seen those pictures of those trucks that have exploded. Did you see the one in West Virginia a few years ago? Did any of you see that? Fracked gas, um, what was it, a truck? Was it a truck? Um, and pipelines are known to have problems, not like 1% of the time or 2% of the time, but most of the time pipelines leak or they have explosions. So you're talking about bringing those kinds of things across New York State to the Dan Scammer plant. Even if it's coming from Central Hudson, it still has to come here. And this is going to increase the need of it. Do you want these things to be going near schools? and near churches and near places where people live. I don't think you do. I know I don't. Okay, so that's one thing to really think about, maintaining this process. Um, somebody also said something about the um, percentage of energy that comes from renewable um, sources. One of the things about that is that there hasn't been money invested in that yet. That's the reason that we don't have more of it, because our country is focusing on what we've always been doing and what the corporations are pushing. Which brings me to another point. 
Remember that corporations are here to make money. And they want to do these things. They want to make money. And it's been stated that we don't need this plant. And we were talking about bringing frack gas. And there's so many things to say, don't do this. But what about when this plant doesn't work anymore or isn't needed anymore? Who's going to clean it up? Who's going to pay for the health problems that happen to your children because this plan is here? You are. It's going to affect your community. It happens over and over and over again in the United States that corporations like with this fracked gas production in Pennsylvania and Ohio and West Virginia, they promise and then they leave a mess that the people have to clean up afterwards. Okay, so that's something to think about too, because that's going to affect your community. Um, so one of the things that, another thing that, that came to my mind was that... Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Speaker Nita, Nita Sutton, City of Newburgh, Dennis Cameron. Hi, I didn't come with anything prepared. Um, I live in the City of Newburgh. And um, we are downwind, as you know, from, from Dan's camera. And there are myself and a significant number of residents in the city of Newburgh who are very concerned about this. We have valiantly tried to rise above many challenges. And I think it's in the best interest of Orange County that we have a beautiful city on the river it's good for you. What's good for us is good for you. Um, I, I understand that this is a job issue, and I appreciate that. But if this is allegedly only a temporary uh, creator of jobs, then that issue is a deeper problem. And it, there seems to be a responsibility to do something about that. that will not have long-term impacts on people's health and property values and um, quality of life. And that's it. Mm, thank you. Uh, Scott Martins, agenda item number 24. Is that me? Sorry. Uh, my name is Scott Martens. Uh, there's no doubt that this current facility, which is antiquated and inefficient, should be redeveloped. And what opponents of this particular proposal are insisting is that the redevelopment be part of the solution and not part of the problem. If it's going to be an energy project, shouldn't the representatives of this county encourage a project that provides for a clean, sustainable, and equitable future? That's real leadership. Some legislators that I spoke to over the past few days have indicated to me that they support this proposal because the host community and school board support it but I would posit that it is not the power plant that they approve of. It is the revenue that they receive from the industry on that property. Those are two very, very different things. And if it were a zero emission renewable energy facility, I'm sure these boards would support it too and probably enthusiastically. For proof that this can be done, look no further than the town of Ulster, where opposition to a proposed gas power plant led to the company changing their proposal to a battery storage facility. And what about the host community in the city of Newburgh, which is already an impacted and sensitive environmental justice community. This proposal is essentially kicking them while they are down. And speaking about impacted communities, how about the thousands of people in Pennsylvania who will be negatively impacted by the increased demand for fracking that this proposal will produce? The state of New York has effectively banned hydraulic fracturing due to its negative impacts on human health and the environment. How can you morally justify supporting a project that will necessitate the drilling of hundreds of new wells, a process that we deemed unsafe? Right now, there are alarming reports of many cases of rare childhood cancers in areas that have fracking wells. In fact, over 100 organizations recently petitioned the governor of Pennsylvania to investigate the apparent link between fracking and cancer, birth defects, and asthma. Additionally, thousands of people have had their wells contaminated and thousands more have had their property values tank because of this malignant industry. These are people's lives that we're talking about. And while it is your duty and charge to protect the interests of the citizens of Orange County first, I implore you to consider the entire process of turning natural gas into energy. Oil and gas developers actively promote their projects as if each step in the process of energy production is exclusive. 
This is called segmentation, and it is a convenient way to make their projects seem less impactful than they actually are. Please do not let them fool you. The fact is, gas industry reports reveal that 10% of the natural gas is lost in the mining and transmission process. This means that massive amounts of fugitive methane is escaping into our aquifers, wetlands, and other protected areas. So when considered in its totality, the drilling, transmission, and consumption of natural gas is inefficient, uneconomical, unsustainable, unhealthy, destructive, risky, and therefore unwise. And what we need now from our elected leaders is bold, courageous leadership that listens to science, learns from the mistakes of others, and unabashedly defends our right to clean air, water, Thank you, and Scott. soil. Thank you. Next speaker, Jared Quattrini. Jared Quattrini. Good afternoon. I stand before you today because I can no longer remain silent and watch my elected officials once again put the long-term health and well-being of my family and friends of this county in jeopardy in the name of economic development. The Dan Scammer Project in Newburgh is a direct contradiction to the environmental goals, excuse me, environmental goals of this state and was harvested by our IDA OCL under the smokescreen of power necessity, job creation, and tax revenue. The Orange County IDA, under the watchful eye of Chairman Brescia, nurtured this project for five years with the assistance of the Orange County Partnership, the Hudson Valley Building and Trades Council, Michelle Hook of the oil and gas sector, and a slew of political donations. This collusionary whirlwind was on full display at the Rules Committee meeting held on September 18, 2019, where a resolution supporting the Dan Scammer project was presented and drafted by Chairman Brescia, who was also the secretary of the IDA, at the local at the request of the local labor unions. Attendees included Maureen Hallahan of the Orange County Partnership, Todd DiOrio of the Building and Trades Council, excuse me, and Michelle Hook, representing Dan Scammer. Legislators had received opposition phone calls throughout the day from local citizens expressing their concerns. Looking to dodge confrontation, the committee quickly moved the Dan Scammer resolution from last to first on that agenda. The IDA and the OCL have repeatedly positioned the labor unions as a tool for division using the need for jobs as a selling point for these large projects, environmental activists, and the general public who question the necessity and legitimacy of projects like Dan Scammer are cast as anti-union. This could not be farther from the truth. We fully support the unions to develop the site. What the acting parties have not discussed is an alternative. Tiger Infrastructure, which owns Dan Scammer LLC, is a multi-billion dollar private equity firm. Two of their subsidies are renewable energy companies. One is a solar, the other is a builder of battery storage facilities. These are much more amenable alternatives to the site and would create jobs, tax revenue, and help meet our clean energy goals. Actions such as this by our elected officials had made us question the moral and ethical values they swore to uphold. There is no longer a definitive line between politics and the corporate initiative. Our legislature has become a mechanism for economic development, protecting the interest of their donors at the expense of their constituents. We are witnessing the gaslighting of our community by our legislature. They have signaled to the Public Service Commission that we are in support of another full-time operation gas power plant. They have signaled to Wall Street that we are ready to give millions in corporate welfare to a multi-billion dollar company. And they have signaled to the public that this is in their best interest when they didn't even ask them. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the Orange County Legislation. I've had the pleasure of having crossed paths with many of you here. However, for those of you who are not familiar with me, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is James Bruin, and I've been a Hudson Valley resident my entire life, as well as an, as well as an Orange County resident for the last 30 years. I'm a local small business owner with three employees, and I'm looking to add more. I've dedicated for the last 25 years in specializing in green and environmentally conscious design. I've come here today to express, my, to express my concern and voice my opposition to the proposed Dan Skimmer power plant in Newburgh as it currently stands. I believe that we are all on the same page here. We want community growth, we want good paying jobs, we all want an increased tax base, and we all need electric for day-to-day -day living. I know that I speak for more than just myself when I say that we are not opposed to any of these goals. 
The difference is how these goals are achieved. The use of fossil fuels for energy production is a short-term win, long-term losing proposition. Fossil fuels are finite, and just because we have discovered new ways to extract the fuel does not mean it solves our problem. It just means we have an immediate increase to the bottom line, and that is what the proposed Dan Scammer plant, power plant does. It ignores long-term viability for short-term investor profits. Allowing this power plant to be built as it stands will have an enormous negative impact on Newburgh. Currently, Newburgh is experiencing solid growth. Ask any realtor. People are embracing the area for its history, where it's headed, and what it has to offer. Building a polluting power plant here will adversely affect the tourism, current economic growth, and most importantly, the physical health of its residents. Newburgh has a rich history of technology, being the second US city, US city to have street lamps and the first city to have televisions, both of which were years ahead of their times, among other advances. So I ask you, why would Newburgh want to take a step back in electric production technology when there are so many more advanced, lower environmental impact, safer ways of generating electric to satisfy our needs for today and years to come? Isn't it better for Newburgh to be a city that to be looked up to rather than a city that gets dumped upon? Doesn't that make long-term economic sense? Not just for Newburgh, but for all of Orange County. Before you cast your final ballot on this, I ask that each one of you take an honest look at all sides of the debate here. All the pros and cons, long-term and short-term. Why does this truly benefit the investors or, the, or your constituents? Today's societies or generations to come? And if it is such a winning proposition, Shouldn't it be uh, located in your own individual district? I'm opposed to the Das Scammer power plant in Newburgh because all sides of this plan have not been fully researched and the negative long-term impact that this will have on Newburgh, an area that is currently experiencing, experiencing growth after years of stagnation. This is not a situation where it is acceptable to ask for forgiveness. Thank you, sir. Uh, Melissa Martens, Minister. And I'd like to take four more speakers after Melissa and then written comments for the next two or three days. I'm here as an impacted resident. Last week in Minising, they vented the frac gas Millennium Pipeline, pushing the pig through the pipe to scrub the walls to keep the gas flowing smoothly. It smelled awful. For three days, I woke up congested with a sore throat and headache, all very unusual for me. It's much worse for my friends that live closer to CPV. Just ask the families who live on Kirby Town Road, or Bates Gates, or Greaves, or any of the neighborhoods next to CPV who, depending on which way the wind blows, smell natural gas and strange odors when they go outside. The ones with skin irritations and respiratory issues, whose otherwise healthy pets have suddenly got sick and died. The sounds of the turbines force people to keep their windows closed and to stop sitting in their backyards. And worse yet for the people in Pennsylvania where the wells are drilled and cancer rates climb. The chronic stress this causes on local residents is reprehensible. Despite the compelling testimonies given to this legislature for years against frac gas power plants and the noise, air quality, and health impacts that have been dealt to the surrounding communities, it feels like a slap in the face that the members of this legislature would spearhead a resolution to support Dan Scammer at this moment in time when our youth and scientists are demanding our leaders to take bold action to combat our climate crisis. Yeah. Our Orange County leadership, the Industrial Development Agency, and the Orange County Partnership must stop investing in frac gas power plants. The natural gas industry creates and expands the market for products known to harm the environment and human health while contributing to political campaigns that further their agenda. Conflicts of interest exist in these relationships. Our agencies must exhaust all possible renewable energy alternatives that truly serve the public interest and not just corporate and special interest. Investment in sustainable, high-paying green jobs and renewable technology is the ticket to a strong economy that Orange County needs. Dan's camera will go from operating as a peaker plant during times of high demand to a baseload generation facility, operating almost continuously. It claims to offer lower emissions per megawatt hour produced, but this will actually result in an increase of overall emissions and pollutions in Newburgh. Its location along the Hudson is vulnerable to flooding, which will increase as climate change becomes more acute. The cooperation of solar, wind, and hydro generation with battery storage facilities could supply all the energy we need. Battery storage systems produce zero emissions and are used to replace these peaker plants. 
That's a real solution. Unions are vital to the welfare of workers in their communities and have been a catalyst for positive change in many social issues. We need their voice in sustainable policy deliberations and their powerful influence to insist upon 100% renewable technology. Yeah. The science is clear. The continued burning of fossil fuels increases fires, floods, droughts, heat waves, waterborne diseases, and, sh and the strength and frequency of storm systems. Food production, housing, sea level rise, and air and water quality will be hard hit. Our children will bear the devastating brunt of our reliance on an obsolete toxic industry. Our rights to clean air and water and the earth our grandchildren inherit are more precious than temporary jobs and short-term profits. Thank you. Profit. Next speaker, Bill Green. Bill Green, next speaker. Okay, three more speakers. Get in, Bill. Hi, my name is Bill Green. I come from Warwick. Um, I'll keep it real short. I think we're, you guys don't have to, you guys and women don't have to make a vote today. You're choosing to do so. I just want you to think about the fact that first CPV next to Middletown, then something <coughs> next to our big other city that's going to pollute people of color and think of the social justice impact that you guys are gonna have on where you're choosing these plants. If you really have the courage, if you really have the courage, put the plant in tuxedo. Thank you, next speaker, Wayne Coulter. Thanks more, Dan Scammer. Hi, thanks for having me. I worked in the fuel oil industry. I was a whistleblower for Metro North, Conrail, and Penn Central. What underground pipes do when they crack that are not reported is really terrible. One seminar I gave down in Croton, every child in the class had asthma. One girl I'm helping recently that was going to the doctor yesterday has to use a nebulizer with a steroid every day to breathe. I've known her for the past five years now, and it's not easy or fun to see. We haven't spoke much about conservation. I'm a minimalist. I don't have a cell phone, a computer, and less is more. In my house, the electric bill may be 50 to $60. One of my friends in Cold Spring, his bill is 31 to $40. He gets a thing saying he's the lowest use. Believe me when I tell you, when these cars are stalled on the way going home today, with all the traffic delays, there's just tons and tons of pollution. Then you add overhead the air traffic we've added, and it's really difficult. These D ratings are not where we want to be at all. Less is more with all this stuff. I've created union jobs, and I'm very proud of all our union workers, but I want them in a safe and healthy place. The railroad, the railroad that I worked for had 14 different unions. The average lifespan there is 64 years old. Toll booth union workers are even less. One boss I argued and threatened to sue. I said, you have a good pension with really good health benefits, but that's only if you're alive and here to collect it. We gotta do better than this. So I'm speaking for every little child for what's facing them, and we have to do better. There is, there's no reason not to. Thanks for hearing me. Thank you. Nicholas Moran, last speaker. Good afternoon, I'm Nicholas Moran. I live in Cornwall, New York, and I'm here speaking in opposition to this power plant. Uh, the climate emergency is upon us. Uh, you don't have to look in the news for that long to see another crisis unfolding. Uh, Houston just got another amazing amount of rain in a short amount of time, causing uh, displacement and death for, the, for its residents. Also, there are climate refugees all across this globe as a result of the climate emergency in our own country, Alaska, Louisiana, um, California with amazing amounts of wildfires uh, are still not rebuilt. And this will continue happening. Puerto Rico has still not been rebuilt after its amazing hurricane. Um, and we can do better. Um, you know, this, the, this plant hasn't even suggested carbon capture and storage. Why is that? Maybe because they know it's too expensive. It's better and cheaper to pollute our environment and pollute the people who live around it, an environmental justice community within five miles, than it is to put it where they live. 
wherever they live in Chappaqua or in, in uh, Malibu, California. So I would urge you, you know, as elected leaders, as elected officials, your primary task is for, to protect the health and welfare of your residents. That is Orange County residents. And you have also strategically decided that we would encourage tourism in the Hudson Valley. But if we're gonna have a third, at a, at a third power plant with Cricket Valley coming online soon, uh, unless it gets stopped, and CPV uh, polluting the air in Middletown, um, why would anybody wanna come to the Hudson Valley um, for our clean air and our, our views and our support? We have, we have the Metro North drops people off at Breakneck Ridge. It's, when, it's the most popular uh, hiking trail in the country in the country and yet we're gonna we're talking about putting a putting a base load power generation facility that burns natural gas also known as methane um, and the only way to make that more environmentally friendly is to pretend like leakage rates are really low we have seen with aerial surveys that the leakage rates are a lot higher when methane goes into the atmosphere it increases warming much quicker than co2 so we cannot afford this. The climate crisis is we're gonna cook ourselves to death if we build more fracked gas. The state government has said we're gonna to go to renewable energy really quickly, and I think we could do better than building this plant. There's conservation, geothermal, uh, wind, renewable energy, solar. Um, please vote no on this, this, this power plant. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jordan Peter Benelli. I respectfully move to approve the minutes of August 1st, 2019. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Majority Leader Finelli again. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, I just want to say, God damn the lying fossil fuel industry and heaven help those who repeat its lies. Thank you very much. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. I move to vote collectively on items number 20 and 21 and 31 and 32. Second. Okay, if there are no objections, that'll be done. Okay, let's go to agenda item. Well, A is received. I'm sorry, what did I miss? Oh, any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Yes, Legislator Tuttle. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I request consent to be placed on the agenda for the resolution is the Orange County Legislature designating October 2019 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Second. We have no objections, that'll be done. Thank you, Lori, for bringing that to us. I'm surprised we never did that in the past, but we'll continue, we'll do that forever in the future. And I got my pink bracelet on, thank you. <laughs> That's gonna be 35A? Okay, thank you. Okay, A, receive and file. Um, agenda item number 24, which is moved first. Um, you want to read that, Jean? And I would ask that each legislator speak once on the subject, because I'm sure quite a few legislators have something to say. So try to say it in one, one saying, please. Legislators Hines and Fagione, resolution of the Orange County Legislature in support of a new power plant facility at the former Dan Scammer Energy Site in Newburgh, New York. Okay. Discussion, Legislator Fagione. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I want to commend all the members of the public who came here today. Uh, these are emotional issues that we here have before us, and I appreciate the respectfulness of each one of them as they came to the podium. The greatest thing about America is we can have a conversation. We may not always agree. We may, in fact, disagree. But the fact in this forum today, people came and spoke their minds freely and without fear of retribution or fear of their government in any way was a respectfulness that I appreciate, so I commend everyone. That being said, this resolution before us, uh, there were plenty of comments made today. One of the comments that I uh, took to heart was that uh, this resolution provides, as we would call it, a bridge the gap to renewables. And it was the governor who said it on July 19th, that fossil fuel infrastructure is not at odds with the state's goals right now. We cannot do away with traditional generation sources until we have alternatives available. And right now they are not. And you cannot end fossil fuels until you have alternatives. That being said, I ask my colleagues to vote on the affirmative to this resolution. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Legislator Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
So this uh, resolution that we have before us today kind of reminds me of a movie that I saw about a week ago. I've probably seen this movie, say, 15 times during my life. It's called 12 Angry Men. On the face of it, they have a murder case that they have to try. On the face of it, it's a slam dunk case, and the person is guilty. But when they really look at the evidence, and they peel that onion on each one of the points, they one by one by one come to a different conclusion about obviously guilty. And so when I look at each one of these whereases, I, like in that movie, it, the whole resolution looks like a slam dunk case, but as I look at each one of them and study them a little more carefully, I start to have second thoughts. Um, the first problem I have is with this resolution which is really nothing more than a memorialization. We really have no say on this project. Anything we vote on up or down here has no impact on whether this project gets approved. The ultimate person is in one of the whereases. It is actually the governor and his departments that give approval to this kind of a project. Well, as one of the whereases states, um, New York State has passed a new law the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. And so, if I were in favor of this, it seems to me I would be contradicting the new law that sets specific goals and targets at specific intervals. But my vote makes no difference. It's what the governor decides to do. So if he really is true to his word that he wants that act to be law in New York State, he did sign it, then you would think he would be against the project, and it wouldn't move forward. If he were against his word, he would vote for it. I look at some of the other whereases, and I see certain people have talked to uh, Dan Scammer officials, and I remember those same people talked to other officials of other companies, power plants that were proposed in Orange County, and they loved those projects. Until a few months later, data came out, and all of a sudden those projects were the worst thing in the world. So I don't see in the same whereas is that certain people talk to the other side of the equation to get the other point of view. I see that the power plant might have to work a lot more than it does now if we don't move forward with the new project because of the nuclear plant coming offline. But that's not what the real data is. As a matter of fact, this plant won't even be operational until long after the nuclear plant is offline. So uh, how could that be? Um, I see that in another whereas, the pollution is going to be a lot lower with the new plant on a per hour basis. <laughs> well, when you analyze it, the old plant is only running 2 to 3% of the time. The new plant will be running 100% of the time. So even at the lower emissions on a for our basis, we are talking about potentially millions of tons of pollutants additional going into the air that all of us will breathe. So I don't know that this is the right project at the right time in the right location. But I'm going to tell you the biggest whereas that troubles me. It's the one that tells us and, and, and I agree, probably the reason most people are in favor of this, especially with the towns and school boards, is because they think, as the whereas says, they will get $50 million in property and school taxes over 20 years. And as a taxpayer, and as a representative of taxpayers, I certainly am in favor of that. However, when I consider it a little more deeper, I'm troubled by that whereas. You see, that $50 million over 20 years is factoring in a proposed pilot that they have not applied for yet. <laughs> now, have they paid the full tax? It would be more like 90 million over the 20 years. But let's just stay on the 50 million for a moment. One lady said, on the one hand, we get tax 
benefits. On the other hand, I get pollution, and I don't want the pollution in favor of the benefits. Well, how about if you got no tax benefits and pollution at the same time? And I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's what's happening. 50 millions over 20 years. The current plant pays 1.7 million a year in combined taxes. That would be 34 million over 20 years. But the current plan has an old IDA that expires in 2021. And so with the expired IDA pilot in 2021 going forward 20 years, the old plant will pay 50 or a little more million, which is equivalent to what the new plant is proposing to pay under the pilot. So having said all that, I will make a motion that I hope after I make the motion somebody seconds, and if they do second it, I will explain the reasoning behind my motion, but I'd like to make a motion, if I can hand it out to the clerk who can hand it out to everyone. It's a very simple motion. I would make a motion to add a second resolved, place it above the one that we currently have, and it would read resolved that we, the Orange County Legislature, hereby support no additional IDA pilot tax breaks being granted to this project. And I hope someone seconds that. Second. Okay. <laughs> now, if, if I can explain on the motion. Let's get to the point. On the motion. I was going to ask my colleagues a point of information, but one of the people actually gave the answer. I was going to ask, does anyone know who actually owns this plant? I suspect not many people do. All right. The owner of the plant, the plant was sold December 28, 2017. The owner is Tiger Infrastructure. In partnership with uh, Agate Power purchased the plant. Agate Power is a privately held corporation that's, uh, according to their own website, invested over $15 billion in energy projects. Tiger Infrastructure is owned by Tiger Funds who is owned by Tiger Management Corp, which is run and owned by the family of the legendary hedge fund manager, Julian Robertson, who Forbes um, projected had a net worth of 4.4 billion at the end of 2018. Now, I am not against billionaires. God bless him for making the 4.4 billion. But I am let's, against let's get us, to the point on this I problem. am against we... a pilot program Okay. that gives a $40 million break to people and companies that don't need it, and I hope everyone supports the amendment. Okay, the IDA will look at that, but thank you uh, this, for this unannounced resolution that you uh, did not inform leadership at all about. You had a caucus by the men's Mr. Mr. Chairman, you I believe you're out of order. order. I'm not out of order. I have every you right to make a it. motion, sir. Thank you, you have your motion, you have your second. You had your little planned meeting by the men's bathroom with legislators Totel and Lujan to do this. Never told leadership about this, and it came totally as a surprise to us. So I hope we, we do away with it in short order. So we have a first and a second. Let's uh, call the question on this right now. No discussion. Roll call. Benelli? No. Paduke? Full disclosure. Full disclosure, I'm a proud 40-year member of uh, the construction trade industry, and I've asked for an opinion from the Board of Ethics that has stated that I should abstain from discussion and voting on this resolution. Amo? No. Nagnostakis? Yes. Benton? No. Cheney? No. Baggione? No. Hines? No. Kulasek? On the advice of her, on a, I'm sorry, an advisory opinion also from the uh, ethics committee. I uh, have to abstain. Both. Thank you. Wuhan? Aye. Menuda? No. O'Donnell? No. Riskevich? No. Sassy? No. Sierra? No. Staganga? No. Sutherland? No. Twatel? Yes. Cooey? Bureau? No. Brescia? No. Three ayes, 16 noes, two abstention. Motion fails.
Okay, no, next legislator, Legislator Tautel. Legislator Tautel. I can hear you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, given all of the comments here today, and in light of the fact that EDC hasn't ruled on the air quality uh, report for the proposed changes to Dan Scammer. I'm gonna make a motion, I don't know if anybody will support me on this or not, that we table this resolution until we have the full information. I feel that I cannot vote on a resolution um, without having the full information on the environmental impact of the project. So I just would like to table it until we can get that information and, and have everything where the government has to vote. Okay, second, no discussion on a motion to table. Roll call on the motion to table. Benelli? No. Paduk? Stain. Amo? No. Anagostakis? Yes. Benton? No. Cheney? No. Baggione? No. Hines? No. Pulisic? No. Lujan? Aye. Minuta? No. O'Donnell? No. Miscavige? No. Sassy? No. Sierra? No. Staganga? No. Sutherland? No. Twatel? Aye. Tui? No. Bureau? No. Brescia? No. Three ayes, 16 noes, two abstentions. Okay, continuing on the motion. Agenda item number 24, any other legislator wish to speak? Yes, Legislator Lujan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I just want to thank everybody that came out tonight. Uh, this is what democracy looks like. When you see individuals who come out, regardless of whether or not we agree, um, I want to just echo what uh, Legislator Fagione said earlier. Um, I just got to say, you know, I, I had the pleasure of speaking with individuals from Dance Scammer, from labor, um, environmental groups from across the county, across the Hudson Valley, and one of the things that I noticed that, you know, and, I, and we saw it here today as well, the inconsistencies, vast inconsistencies between stats, between, you know, the, the facts that, that we all would like and that we should need to make a decision. Now, I've been talking to individuals for the last couple of months. I don't know how many legislators had the opportunity to do that, but I would, I would imagine that for an issue as controversial as this one, this would be one of the things that you'd like to do. Um, I know that in the last week and a half, we have received at least three dozen different emails against this, this uh, resolution. I've gotten phone calls from all over the county against this resolution. I want to say just, just you know, very briefly, a couple of weeks ago, we had a meeting in the city of Newburgh. And in the city of Newburgh, they were just like seven other municipalities, they were considering whether or not they were going to drop this resolution, whether they were going to go against it. They took months, they spent months talking about it, months saying, weighing in the pros and cons of, of whether or not they wanted to support it, and seven communities voted against it. The city of Newburgh did the same thing. They wanted to, or they wanted to see whether or not they were going to support it. And just like today, we had a great discussion. We had members of labor. We had members of, of the community that came out and spoke in favor or against. And just like today, we had conversations about uh, whether they was going to create jobs and the impact on, on uh, the environment. I can tell you I represent a district that has, unfortunately, amongst the highest unemployment in the district. And so when we talk about jobs, this isn't just an important issue to me. This is personal. So make no mistake about it. I want to make sure that you men and women in labor get the jobs that you need. I have stood by you every single time to make sure that you do that. But here is my concern about this project. I wanted a process that was above board, one where we could all discuss, where we can all weigh in the pros and cons. This is not that process. I went to a rules committee meeting where it was already pretty much decided where we were going to vote. That is not the kind of process that the mocks you should have. We as legislators have a responsibility, a responsibility to make sure that we're looking at the health impacts. And we're looking at the impacts uh, that for, for jobs, of course. But I tell you, as a legislator, I do not want to leave a legacy of one that may potentially, and I'm not going to attack the company. It's been attacked plenty today. I'm just going to say, I do not want to leave that kind of legacy. And I'm concerned. I'm concerned enough that I'm going to vote no. I'm concerned enough because when I think about the fact that in 20 years, this project may still be running and that it actually might, might leave my community a far worse than it is today, I have to vote no. Not because I want to, because I have to. 
So again, I want to thank every single one of you that came out, both pro and against, but honestly, my fellow legislators, this, was not the pro this is not the process that our community deserves. We deserve to hear a pro and con argument. They deserve for us to be informed leaders. I thank my legislators. I know and I'm confident that you're going to do the right thing. At least I hope that you will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, well, uh, yeah, I uh, originally wasn't going to speak on this issue, but I do want to publicly uh, clarify my position. Uh, I will be voting no on this resolution. Um, as far as the project goes, um, don't get too excited. As far as this project goes, um, you know, the job creation and tax revenue, uh, more efficient air cool plant are all benefits. However, I don't think this is the forum to be having this discussion as a county legislature. Uh, I don't think that um, uh, this is an issue we should be weighing in on. Uh, we don't have a regulatory or a legal uh, position to either approve or reject these plans, which is why I'm voting no. Uh, by that same reasoning, if this was a resolution opposing Dan Scammer, I would also be voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Legislator Benton, you haven't spoken. Yeah, a couple of my pet peeves are, uh, were pointed out today. That's why I'm going to make some comments. Um, first of all, I've lived probably within two or three miles of this plant since I was born. Uh, I remember seeing in the 60s um, the emissions from the smokestack, and everyone has to agree they're going to be emissions. But I remember the smoke in the 60s. I was rusty brown, or a shade of such color. Um, nowadays, the emissions, uh, the smokestacks, I mean, they really are basically white. Not nearly like it used to be. As far as the pilots, another one of my pet peeves, uh, I was there when Dynagy decided to fight its assessment. Everybody seems to forget that they went to the Securities and Ex Stock Exchange uh, for public uh, disclosure and they said that they were financing a 1.6 or 1.8 billion dollar plant and then a couple years later came to the town of Newburgh and said it's only worth 400, that 400 million, 500 million, something like that and they got a judge to agree with them so that the property taxes or that they paid was uh, cut significantly. Uh, I had met with Mr. Reed and said, um, I'll be supportive of this project as long as they don't pull something like that and that there's an agreed value uh, established so that they can't do that. As far as the pilots go, I believe they're legally entitled to a guaranteed 10% uh, 10 year plan, 10% a year, as well as sales tax exemptions and that's what they're entitled to. I don't think I would be in favor of them getting something like a 20 or 25 year uh, pilot, but I'm fine with 10 or 12 or maybe 15, something like that. Um, as far as other things that are mentioned about our air quality, I think Orange County's non-attainment is basically because we're so close to New York City and uh, the wind blows counterclockwise or clockwise, it blows in all directions and it blows their air here, which makes our air worse. And as far as the clean energy sector, everybody has to be in favor of clean air, clean water, um, renewables and such, but obviously, you know, they're nowhere near supplying what we're going to need. Like the gentleman said, um, if we were depending on this sector, we'd be sitting here by candlelight or only able to do things in the daylight. But again, please. again with the private and uh, with the clean energy sector, you got to also realize that without government subsidies of tax breaks, funding by the government, etc., which again comes out of your other pocket, so to speak, when you're talking about uh, taxes that everybody pays. Without that, nobody would be doing any of these renewables, and they really are not financially viable at the time. Everything takes time to get that way, but for now, it's not the, you know, attractive to business people, and so we definitely need this plant to fill in. Please, please, no shouting, no shouting, please. Legislator Stagenga. Legislator Trottel, you spoke. We're only going to do one legislator. Hi. Um, I, I have listened very closely to what everybody has said, and over the last couple days I have heard pros and cons and have spoken to a lot of people. Um, this resolution which is coming to us is we don't have the control or the power to permit, not permit, as far as that. I believe that I will be supporting this. The reason being why is that this will go to the state. 
there will be a permit process. They have the expertise, they have the criteria, they have to make sure that this will be done correctly. Um, and I believe in the free enterprise. I don't believe that we as legislature here on this level, since we do not have the power to approve or disapprove this type of project or how it goes about, that we should, excuse me, excuse me, that we should be putting any free enterprise out of the position of being able to continue and at least ask and put in the permits and to get the approvals. Thank you. Okay, roll call. He's told the right. Roll call. No, roll call. Roll call. Point of order, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Refrain from those comments, legislator Lucan. Could you? Amo? Yes. Yeah. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Cheney? No. Baggione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Pulisic? Same. Lujan? Absolutely not. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Ruskevich? No. Sassy? Yes. Sierra? Aye. Stegenga? Yes. Sutherland? No. Tortell? No. Tui? Aye. Bureau? No. Russia. Yes. 12 ayes, 7 noes, 2 abstentions. Okay, attend <coughs> item number 2. Mr. Martins out too. Please escort Mr. Martins out. I just want to say that I wish that you had listened to what was said. Agenda item number one, please uh, read it, Jean. Legislators Benton and Benelli, resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the sale of a portion of lands off Quarry Road in the town of Goshen, classifying the action as a type one action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Okay, discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? No. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton, yes. Cheney, yes. Fagione, Pulisic. Yes. No, thank you. Please leave, ma'am. No yelling. Thank you. I'm sorry, Legislator Lujan. 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 Menuda. Yes. O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Ruskevich. Ruskevich. Rasassi. Sierra? I can't hear anyone. Stegenga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tortell? No. Tui? Vero? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 16 eyes, 5 noes. Okay, number two, which is a two thirds resolution. Legislators Benton and Benelli, resolution pursuant to county law section 2155 of the Orange County Legislature determining certain real property is not required for public use and authorizing the receipt of bids for the same. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Majority, Minority Leader, excuse me, Paduk. I like the first one. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> okay, we all know that the uh, Duchess Quarry Caves are located at this site and are truly one of the rarest and most significant places associated with our past regarding the information it has yielded and has yet and has yet the potential to yield is irreplaceable. Quarry blasting has the potential to inadvertently destroy these valuable cultural resources. Since the initial evacu uh, excavation of these caves in the 1960s, this site has encountered has continued to yield critical data that has been pivotal to our understanding of life in the ancient Hudson Valley, and there exists significant research potential for additional sites in the vicinity. 
In September of 1992, the president of the State Archaeological Association suggested that Orange County's first task would be to protect the caves in perpetuity, and that the best decision would be the cessation of mining and blasting there to protect the caves against damage. I agree with all of the above and ask that we all consider the importance of protecting these caves and not just vote yes because of the money put in the budget for this sale of the surrounding acres. I'll be voting no. Okay. Any other roll call? Nelly? Yes. The Duke? No. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Bagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulasek? No. Luhan? No. Minuta? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Riskevich? Yes. Sassy? Yes. Sierra? Staganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tortell? No. Tui? Yes. Bureau? Yes. Gresham? Yes. 16 ayes, 5 noes. Okay, agenda item number three. Legislators Benton and Tui. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature in support of issuing a request for proposals for the sale of the county-owned Grand Street properties in the city of Newburgh and supporting conditions in relation thereto. Discussion? Yes, Minority Leader Padu. As many of us here know, five years ago, we bought these three Grand Street properties for the future expansion of the SUNY Orange Campus in Newburgh. It was a good but hasty plan at the cost of $3.6 million. It's sad that all the details about these three property, properties apparently were not discussed thoroughly and had not acknowledged that the county had the right and formally had sold the YMCA building to ARC, but that the financing of that building fell through and that the county still had the right to sell it if it wanted to. It's unfortunate that the building was to be the revenue generator for the college in the Grant Street proposal. It's sad it has come to this after the college had secured grants and private donations totaling $3.2 million and could have received another $3.2 million from matching state grants for the project. However, with the college's decision to pull out after being notified that we were going to offer an RFP for the purchase of the YMCA building, we now need to get these buildings back on the tax rolls so we can get back the taxpayer dollars we spent on the purchase of these three, build, these three buildings, and I will be voting for this resolution. Any further discussion? Yes, Legislator Luhan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I too wanna to say that uh, while it is very uh, sad to know that we're not gonna be using these projects for SUNY Orange as was originally uh, discussed over the course of the past year and a half, um, I will be voting yes, because I do believe that this, that ultimately we can find a project that will support, we'll, we'll put it both on the tax roll and uh, a project that will eventually be able to be good for all of Orange County. But I will say this, uh, that process was again uh, an example of, of where we could be doing things better. And, and there was a moment there where we could have had a project that really would have been great for, for our, our, our community, um, not only in the city of Newburgh, but across Orange County and been a, been a benchmark for the, for the region. Thank you. I will say briefly that uh, the decision to buy these three buildings was not made in haste. It was a territorial decision, basically. Um, I was in an area where it didn't really affect me. Um, legislators from Middletown were against it. Legislators from Newburgh were for it. Um, the people, the legislators at the time that voted for it, voted for it because they believed in the vision that the foundation presented to us. And legislators from Newburgh, and we've sat on those buildings for a very long time and nothing has happened. So it's nice to come in late in the game and say that there's been a great vision, but it hasn't happened, but it still could happen in large measure if the per prospective buyers do something with Ock Newburgh. Did you want to say something? Legislator Minuta. Thank you, Chairman. These three buildings are some of the gems that the city of Newburgh holds. Purchasing them for the uh, purpose of the college or what other purpose, just to have them as a placeholder is important. Architecturally speaking, they are significant in so many ways. It is uh, my intent to vote yes uh, for the sale of these for an RFP, uh, but that they be used for the highest and best use that they currently afford. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Benton and then Legislator O'Donnell. 
just to disagree with Mr. Uh, Legislator Lujan, there's nothing that says that these uh, buildings will not be, like you said, put to use with something that will be contributory to the education process in, in Oc, Orange County Community College, or SUNY Orange. There's nothing that is, you know, opposes that, except it puts the properties in private hands that are paying taxes. Correct. Senator O'Donnell. Could just uh, set the record straight. I, I was the chair of the site selection committee when we decided to buy the properties, the Tower Building and the Maple Building. The legislature at the time put up $45 million of taxpayer money. Mr. Kaplan's foundation put up $10 million. Senator Larkin and Mr. Kaplan went up to see Governor Pataki, who put up $35 million worth of state funding. Shortly thereafter, I convinced then County Exec Ed Diana to go forward with the purchase of those three buildings specifically for the college. This legislature, many of you were members back then, voted to support that move. The idea was to circle the entire block. The college did nothing, nothing for years. So putting these buildings back on the tax rolls is gonna be good for employment in the city of Newburgh. I spend a lot of time over there, I do a lot of volunteering over there. This is good for the city of Newburgh. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Badoop? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? <coughs> Bent? Yes. Cheney? Baggione? Yes. Hines? Pulisek? Yes. Lujan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui? Vera? Brescia? 21 eyes. Eight number four. Legislators Paduk and Ruskevich. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works to accept the issuance of a New York State Department of Transportation use and occupancy permit. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Vegione? Hines? Hulasek? Lujan? Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. Okay. 19 eyes, number one absent. Number five? Sierra left, right, 20 eyes, one absent. Yeah. Legislators Tui and Minuta, resolution authorizing the Orange County Commissioner of Public Works to contract with certain towns and villages for snow and ice control on certain county roads pursuant to section 135A of the highway law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra Absent, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 20 ayes. Number six. Legislators Paduk and Tui. Le resolution setting a day for public hearing with respect to the proposal to amend local law number four of 2008. The public hearing would be on November 7, 2019 at 3.15. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, number seven. Resolutions. Cool, I'm sorry. <laughs> Legislators Kulisek and Benton. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under the State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the modification to an existing solid waste management facility permit for Orange County Transfer Station number one in the town of Goshen, classifying the action as an unlisted action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number eight. Legislators Kulisek and Paduk. 
Resolution amending resolution number 101 of 2019, a resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works, the implementation and funding of 100% of the cost of a transportation project of which qualified costs may be reimbursed from budget, I'm sorry, Bridge New York funds pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law in section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Local. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Steganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. And number nine. Legislators Kulasek and Menuda. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Discussion? So did you second, John? Second. Okay. Discussion. Roll call. Benelli. That's right. I, I yes. do that once in a while, too. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Steganga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay. Number 10, supermajority. Legislators Minuter, Ruskevich, Benton, and Paduke, amending bond resolution dated October 3, 2019, amending the bond resolution adopted December 3, 2015, in relation to the construction of drinking water system improvements to the county owned Thomas Bull Memorial Park. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? No. O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Steganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. Yep. 18 eyes, yeah, 18 eyes, two no's. Okay, number 11. Legislators Kulasek and Benton, amending bond resolution dated October 3rd, 2019, amending the bond resolution adopted November 1st, 2018, in relation to the construction of improvements to the county-owned Algonquin Park Dams. Okay. Discussion? Um, I just want to say something that uh, was brought up to me last night. There were about three residents that com complained to a town councilman in Newburgh that, uh, you know, the, I guess the pond is drained there and to maybe look at dredging. I know it's kind of short notice, but uh, I don't believe it's been dredged in 30 years. So Barry, maybe you could take that up at physical, even though we have budget uh, as a possible semi-dredging. I know it's an expensive process, but. It, it was discussed at physical and the discussion revolved around trying to get some of the garbage that's at least in there um, out of there. Um, dredging would be a pretty substantial cost, but we can address it with uh, Department of Public Works. Okay, if you do that, I'd appreciate it. So, yes, Legislator Benton. Yes, I know uh, several council people have been contacted, as well as myself, about the, the tires and the garbage and other debris that's on the bottom of the lake, lake there. But uh, dredging, I don't think is at all feasible because you'd be amazed, I think, what DEC permits and how long it would take you to get permission to do any sort of dredging. I know it's like ridiculous to ask for dredging of the Hudson River to put in a marina. So, yeah. I would think it would be similar, if not worse, since it's a public park and area. Okay, thanks. Legislator Coulson? Yes, I think at the committee we were assured that the garbage would be removed by, by okay. Brooks. But the, the dredging, of course, is another it's very expensive proposition. DC requirements of where that goes when it leaves the, the, the pond bed. The, I think last time it had to stay on the property and they filled in a bunch of ravines with it. Uh, I'll have to talk with the fellow who was, uh, who was the town historian and lived across the street at the time. Okay, I know it's near and dear to yours and Legislator Benton's concerns, um, so I'll relay that. Thank you, uh, Chairman Cheney. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Steganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Number 12. Legislators Ruskevich and Tui. 
Resolution of the Orange County Legislature given notice of intent to assume lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the replacement of Bank Street Bridge in the Village of Warwick and making a preliminary determination that this project will be classified as an unlisted action. Second. Discussion? Local. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Wuhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. Okay, number 13. Legislators Ruskevich, I'm sorry. Legislators Ruskevich, Tui, Benton, and Minuta. Bond resolution dated October 3rd, 2019. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the preparation of surveys, preliminary and detailed plans, specifications, and estimates necessary for the replacement of the county-owned Bank Street Bridge in the village of Warwick. Stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 50,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Ulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, number 14. Legislators Benelli and Tui. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under the State Environmental Re Re Review Act seeker with respect to the replacement of Board Bridge in the town of Blooming Grove, classifying the action as unlisted action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Second. Okay, Staganga added. She's the only one today that has asked to be added to any resolution, I believe. Oh, O'Donnell, because you represent. <laughs> okay, O'Donnell too. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Ulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Plus you have that little piece of blooming grove too, right? Okay, 15. Legislators Benelli and Benton, amending bond resolution dated October 3rd, 2019, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, amending the bond resolution adopted December 6, 2018, in relation to financing the cost of replacement of the board bridge located in the town of Blooming Grove at the total estimated cost of 800,000. O'Donnell and Stiganga again. Okay, discussion? Uh, Hines too, he has a little, a little Blooming Grove. Yeah, but it's your district. You want it, well, you're on it, right, Katie? <laughs> Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Tartel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, number 16. Legislators Tui and Benelli, resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the County Route 44 culvert rehabilitation in the village of Woodbury, classifying the action as an unlisted action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Second. Discussion? Totel added. Benelli added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Number 17. Legislators Benton and Kulisek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the acquisition of a parcel of real property situated in the village of Woodbury, town of Woodbury, county of Orange, state of New York, for the purpose of drainage improvements. Second. Discussion? Benelli added? Okay. Uh, Amo added? Totel added? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. Okay, 18. Legislators Benton and Sutherland. Resolution providing for a public hearing on the proposed Orange County budget for the fiscal year 2020 social services district purposes and upon the assessment rolls for Orange County Sewer District Number 1, Orange County Small Watershed Protection District Number 1 for Cromline Creek and Beaver Dam Lake District for such fiscal year, pursuant to sections 271 and 359 of the county law and section 4.606 of the Orange County Charter, the public hearing would be on October 24th, 2019 at 5 p.m. 
discussion? Two we added, Duke added. No, I have a question. Oh, you have a question? Go ahead. I, I may, I don't know what I'm missing here, but what is the social services district purpose? I don't think I've ever seen that. The Orange County, um, under New York State law, all social services uh, departments are considered social services districts. So in Orange County, the social services district is all of Orange County. Okay. But for social services purposes and receipt of uh, New York State funds. For that clarification, Totel added and Stagenga added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Hadoop? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Stagenga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, 19. Legislators Benton and Anagnostakis. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county-owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Magnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tartell? Tui? Bureau? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, 2021, roll call. Yes. Do we have all Republicans to vote? To so both 20 and 21? Absolutely. And all Dems. And all Dems, okay. Michael, two? Everybody. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, 22. Legislators Hines and Sierra, resolution approving the adoption of a revised Orange County Fire Mutual Aid Plan. Second. Uh, Bureau added, Kulisek added, Fagione added, uh, Totel added, uh, Stegango added, roll call, and Sutherland, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number 23. Legislators, Cheney and Fagione, resolution of the Orange County Legislature requesting the New York State Commissioner of Public Health to extend the implementation date of statutory changes to the definition of elevated blood level blood lead level, and for New York State to provide funding to counties for said changes. Benelli added AMO, cool. all Republicans, independents, and Democrats. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. AMO? Yes. Magnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. Okay, number 25? Yes. Yes, you can. Do we add 22, 25? Legislators Paduke and Hines, resolution of the Orange County Legislature opposing Governor Cuomo's proposed regulations requiring new license plates and fees. Second. Discussion? All Republicans. All Republicans, okay. All Dems. All Dems and Joseph Menuda for bringing this. You want to say something or no? Yes, and Tui, you're already added. Emo added too. Go ahead, Joe. It's your baby. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to bring this uh, before the legislature. Uh, I would like to, first of all, thank Spectrum News for having brought this to my attention uh, many weeks ago. Uh, this resolution, uh, which came forth from Fulton County uh, through a Senator James Tedisco, uh, who brought it to their attention. Other counties, such as Rensselaer County, have also come on board with this. What this was, was essentially a money grab from the governor's office, uh, a purported uh, 2.3 million to actually create the plates and $70 million in revenue windfall uh, to the state. Uh, I would really like to see the state tax through normal means rather than these types of means that the general public understands what they're gonna be taxed on rather than continuing to dip into their pockets as this does. Uh, I am very proud to be able to bring this to the legislature and to put, a, put this uh, 
on Governor Cuomo's desk to say, as counties, we are not going to continue with these continued mandates that are unfunded, uh, as well as these money grabs, simply so they can balance their budget and put it all on us to explain to our constituents. So thank you for the time in this, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's a great resolution. I'm, I'm glad that we're bringing it forward, but just a point of information, the governor has backed down on this plan. We know that. Yeah. Okay. We want to send a message anyway. I just want to make sure everybody knew that. This is, this is a stopgap so that in case they decide to flip-flop again, well, at least we're on the record. Got it. Thank you. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Badoop? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 20 ayes. Okay, number 26. Legislators Kulisek and Paduke, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Attorney's Office to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Office of Legal Services. Second. Discussion, Fagione added, Tui added. Oh, you want to speak? Okay, go ahead. Chairman, I don't want to be added. I'd just like to add these comments that in the upcoming budget season, just keep in mind, this is $23.8 million over five years that the state of New York has allocated uh, for these legal services. Keep that in mind um, in the Public Safety Committee, as well as in the overall budget, that the state has decided that district attorneys across New York State will receive zero funding for the new crime bills and the, uh, the mass exodus we will see of uh, those who are in jails and prisons throughout our state. So just keep that in mind through the budget season. This is $23.8 million over five years from the state and zero for district attorneys. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Legislator Fagion. Stiganga, did you want to be added, I thought? No? I disagree with them. Okay. <laughs> Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagion? Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Number 27. Legislators Benelli and Kulisek. Resolution confirming the appointment by the County Executive to the Orange County Board of Ethics. Second. Discussion. Tortell added. Hines added. Roll call. Benelli. O'Donnell added. No. All right, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. 28. Legislators Tui, O'Donnell, Amo, and Benelli. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature in support of Senate Bill Number S. 6531 and Assembly Bill Number A2836A, amending the public health law and insurance law to provide registration and licensure of pharmacy benefit managers in New York State. Yes. All Republicans. Okay. Legislator Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, do not put me on as a sponsor. I, uh, in working on Senator Scoofus's staff in our uh, investigation on this, we're happy that we concluded. The investigation with a lot of laws passed. So, although I am in support, somebody leave a phone here or something. I hope it's a phone. <laughs> it is a phone, right? Okay. All right, leave it in my office. I'll have to look it over and make sure it's... <laughs> okay. Sorry, Majority Leader Benelli. As I was saying, although I am in support, I will have to abstain. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Legislator, Minority Leader Purdue comes. Here you know, I had all Dems, and I'd just like to thank Senator Scoofus and the Investigation Committee for all their hard work uh, in discovery the greedy acts of the pharma pharmacy benefits managers. Without his month-long hard work, our small town pharmacies and constituents would still be suffering the PBM's aggressive acts. I strongly urge the governor to call the bill up and sign it immediately since it's passed both houses. 
Well, I would thank Legislator Sutherland for bringing this to committee and uh, having a full discussion. Uh, it was she that brought it forth to us. So she deserves the biggest thanks as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to have one be added to, um, to this. Um, and hearing that everybody would like to be um, added to this resolution, I would like to thank you on behalf of um, myself and Al Squitieri and Mark Friedo, uh, Friedis. They were not able to be here this evening. They could not get coverage at their pharmacies. Um, and also for all of the business owners, the small business owners, um, pharmacies that you know are in our area uh, to have already closed. Only Lord knows what's going to happen with some of the other ones. Um, I'm not going to get into it. We all know what this is. Thank you for taking the time to read it and um, for the support. Hopefully the governor will um, maybe finally do something with this bill. Okay. Legislator Totel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, given my position with Senators Cooper's, please do not add me and I will be abstaining from voting on this. Okay. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Leader Amo. In, in doing the research, this, research in this, I stopped by a local pharmacy, and the owner said, well, let me show you a letter. And he had a letter, and he wouldn't show me the name of the person for privacy purposes. The CVX, was C, which is C, CVS, which is one of the benefit, com owns a benefit company, had written a gentleman that said, your medication will no longer be provided at this pharmacy. You must go to a CVS store to get it. I said, what? And they, that's the power of the PBMs. I, you, know, you know, the, the concept that Janet introduced us to, but when you see one particular example, you just can't have this medication. You got to go somewhere else. So now he has to drive five or six miles to another town to get a medication. Chairman, if I may, I'm sorry. I just yes. wanted to thank Council for um, getting this put together so quickly and for your your help. Okay, roll call. No. Yes. The Duke. Yes. Amo. Yes. Benagnostakis. Benton. Cheney. Baggione. Hines. Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, yes. Tautel, okay. Tui, Bureau, Brescia, 18 ayes, two abstentions. Okay, number 29. Legislators Tautel and Sutherland. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation. Second. Discussion? Yes, Tui added. Uh, Minuta, you want to speak to it? Okay, go ahead. And Tui, you want to just be added, right? Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to be voting no on this for the simple fact that I don't feel that I have enough information for uh, what they're requesting. Thank you. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione, Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 19 eyes, one abstention. And number 30. Legislators Tautel and Amo. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Biro? Brescia? 19 eyes, one abstention. Okay, 31 and 32, roll call. What well, wants to be added? Or? All Dems added? Oh, what's that? Okay. Any Republicans? And Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevin? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui? Biro? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, 33. Legislators O'Donnell, Amo, and Agnostakis, Sutherland, Tui, and Tautel. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature designated October 2019 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Discussion? All Republicans? Okay. All Dems? And Michael? Okay. You're on it. Roll call. 
Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. 34. Legislators O'Donnell, Amo, and Agnostakis, Sutherland, Tui, and Tautel. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing October 2019 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Discussion, all Republicans, all Dems, and Independents. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Agnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. 35. Legislators O'Donnell, Amo, and Agnostakis, Sutherland, Tui, and Tartell. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing October 15, 2019 as White, White Cane Awareness Day. Discussion, all Republicans, all Dems, Independents, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. 36. 35A. 35A, I'm sorry. Legislators Tartell and Paduk, resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating October 2019 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. Discussion. All Republicans, all Dems, Independents. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, 36. Legislators Tui and Sutherland, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Office for the Aging to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Office for the Aging. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, 37, that's what I thought. Okay. Legislators O'Donnell and Sassy, resolution designating Orange County Tourism as the Tourism Promotion Agency of Orange County. Discussion? Fagione added. Okay, Ruskevich added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, 38. Just look down for one minute. I'll lose my place. Legislators Lujan, Fagione, Kulisek, and Benelli. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create indigent legal services data officer at the Orange County Department of Law. Second. Discussion. Total added. And discussion. Go ahead. Um, we hear a lot about unfunded mandates. It's nice to hear that this uh, is being paid for this position by a grant position and will be terminated when the grant runs out. Thank you. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Biro? Brescia? 20 ayes. 39. Legislators Lujan, Benton, Tortell, and Sutherland. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate employment and training director at the Employment and Training Administration. Second. Discussion, Bureau added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Adu? Yes. Amo? Yes. An Ag Agnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Fawcett? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Tartell? Tui? Vero? Fresh? 20 ayes. 40. Legislators Tartell, Sierra, and Staganga, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify secretary and administrative assistant to, to senior secretary and administrative assistant at the Orange County Department of Emergency Services. Discussion. Uh, bureau added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? 
Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Bureau, Russia. 20 ayes. And number 41. Legislators Staganga, Sierra, Benton, and Benelli. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate Director of Real Property Tax Services to the Department of Finance, Division of Real Property Tax Service Agency. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, Animal, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I, I know I've spoken to the body here about the caves and you're apparently going to go forward with the sale of the mine adjacent to it. And just imagine 12,500 years ago, a, high, a guy on the ridge there on Lookout Mountain, as it's known as, spotting some caribou running down in the, the glaciers 15 miles up the Hudson Valley now, freezing cold. The hunting party was warned by the guy that spotted the caribou and he set his spear down in the cave in the dark and ran to tell his buddies they're coming. These tools would not be found until many thousands of years later. The discovery of that spear point by local Orange County archaeologists in the mid 60s found what would be called the Dutchess Quarry Cave Site located at Lookout Mountain in present day Florida, New York. The United States Department of Interior National Register of Historic Places 1994 Narrative Statement of Significance, Section 8, page 1, says, the Dutchess Quarry Caves in Goshen Quarry, numbers 2 to 5, have made a significant contribution to our understanding of the resource procurement. The caves with their record of utilization beginning in the early Holocene have provided dated Paleo-Indian materials that have served as an essential link in the development of regional settlement models for post-Pleistocene Northeastern North America. Faunal materials from caves one and eight are providing important clues to substance resources and paleo-environmental conditions. Chert quarry features like Goshen Quarry 3 are adding to our understanding of how prehistoric people exploited geological resources in order to obtain raw materials needed for tool making. Inclusion of Locust 3, Chert, in the stone tool assemblage of Cave 1, Walters and Laporta, Dr. Philip Laporta, who's a Goshen resident and has written many, many books and is considered an authority worldwide. The letters, May 12th, through 19, uh, uh, 13th, 1993, has cemented the association between the caves and the church quarry features. Since the initial exploration of the cave in the mid-1960s, the area has yielded data and has been a source of scientific debate and pivotal importance to our understanding of prehistory recognition of new features. This room is about 100 feet long. Right now, the proposal is, is to make a buffer around the caves, whatever happens to the mine, whoever the new owners or operators are. Mr. Chairman, would you feel comfortable sitting in your chair there while they're blasting 100 feet away? Okay, so what we need to do, and I'll continue this out, I hope I don't run out of time. Given that several of the sites, quarry blasting has the potential to inadvertently destroy these valuable cultural resources. We strongly encourage the county to consider how blasting may affect these sites as part of their review. This is from the Division of Historic Preservation. Also, H.R. Deck, president of Orange County Chapter of the State Archaeological Association says, and I quote, the county's first task would be to protect the caves in perpetuity. The best decision would be the cessation of mining and blasting, however, if that is impossible, to protect the caves against damage as an interim measure by mining the two acres around the caves should be prohibited. August 3rd, 1993, the Lookout Coalition 
and therefore it be resolved that the town of Goshen recommends that Orange County should prohibit any further mining in a proximity of 200 feet around the caves. People we may find in here the link to mankind and things that we don't know about already. I urge you to take a look at what we're doing here and make that provision for protection. Thank you. Thank you for listening to what I have. Taylor Sterling, is she here still? I left a copy of this with your secretary. Yep. It will be distributed. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see Taylor, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay.